Hello, and thank you so much for joining us for your ROH Po Show for September 7th already. Very happy to have you here. Very happy to have Reg back after he was schmoozing at Stylecast with the wonderful crew in Chicago that went to what ended up being a fantastic pay-per-view. Oh, yeah. But we're here to talk. ROH today. We're going to talk a little bit about StarCast too, but before we do, I'll remind you that wrestling is for everyone, Fightful is for everyone, and I'll remind you to send in your Super Chats and your Humper Chats at HumperChats.com. Also remind you to subscribe to Fightful Select because CM Punk Watch continues forever, so get your daily dose of CM Punk. What have you been doing, Kate? <laughs> He's been... Uh, you know what? I'm starting to think that this guy's a little bit of a troublemaker. Right? You think so? <laughs> I think so. I think maybe my I hadn't heard like uh, 35 to 40 stories about it. Nope. Zero. No. <laughs> no. No. Put them up. Put them up. Put them up. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Not me. Please. I, I tweeted this a while ago. Like, if wrestling has shown me anything, it's like, I'm a little bitch. Okay? Yeah. Like, I am running. I am right. running if someone tries to throw a punch. I don't defend I thought myself. the point of this is to not do that this is fake doing that like i don't have to be tough because we're fake doing this yeah i thought that that's <laughs> what i thought the deal was too but i think everybody's on different pages i don't mm. know i don't know reg but hey there's a lot more at fightfulselect.com other than cm punk drama there's other drama all over the place but there's contract news we got more coming up uh we've got more pay-per-views on the horizon that's for damn sure we got wrestle dream around the corner we've got roh pay-per-view goodness coming up as well in grand slam Becky Lynch's passport is it good apparently I or know, something tiny tear in it <laughs> there's all sorts of stuff happening at fightfulselect.com including if you were at starcast and you saw the grab city boys in person you can get ask grab city behind the paywall every two weeks you also get alex blowski and i doing paywall pay-per-view post shows if you want to check something out that's not on the main channel it's a little more exclusive <laughs> but we're not talking any of that tonight we're talking no. ring of honor yes uh i thought it was kind of a a mixed bag of a show we got some stories that were continuing and then we also got like the best friends are around breaking Every time. the <laughs> the, the light skin condition that why does it always feel like history? it's like oh the best friends are here we should put them in a match but like yeah, they, oh, knew they were gonna be there they're kicking around backstage. We'll throw them out there. So <laughs> we got a, a little bit of things that were smooshed together, but we did get some storylines advancing. What were your thoughts kind of overall? And tell us a little bit about StarCast. Put yourself over. Tell us how great it was to all meet all, right. all the regular people that came to see you. Uh, it was amazing, of course. Uh, got to meet a bunch of people that I see their names in various chats throughout these podcasts. I'm in here. Yeah. Reggie Simmons was out there uh, at Hell All yeah. Out, which okay. was great to meet. Uh, but yeah, it was amazing. We were on stage doing this and just thinking about all the moments while we're doing the podcast of like, yo, this podcast started here. We did this Tony Khan thing one time, the swole stuff, like all this crazy stuff is just going through my mind as we're doing this. And I'm like, this is cool, man. But at the end of it, it was just like a bunch of cool people telling me and my friends that they love our podcast. And I loved it. Uh, Nyla Rose came on stage to crash the party, like just so many great fun moments okay, to be here. there. And uh, yeah, I loved it. Uh, everybody that supported uh, that day or any day ever, y'all are great. Thank you so much. Uh, this Ring of Honor, I was there for some of these matches, I guess, uh, at the Collision show. So um, it was cool to see them again. But yeah, it felt like at the show when when uh, Tony Nese is talking, and then I'm like, oh, Nihilus Young, uh, Silas Young's interrupting him. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I think so. Last week, what you missed out on because here's the thing, Reg. Let's talk about when you abandoned me, okay? Yep. First of all, you never tell me. There was one nope. time you told me in advance. I'm always mm -hmm. like, hey, you're not around tonight, are you? So but more importantly, keep you on them. I get one 19 match episode while you're gone. And last week, SP3 and I stretched out an hour and a half review from a 57 minute episode. <laughs> You're our Goldilocks, man. I might have the blonde hair, but when you're here, the episode lengths are just right. And when you abandon right. ship, man, but there is there is something to that, right? I think we get these kind of off-kilter episodes when collision or the AEW schedule ramps up or down based on pay-per-views and, and things like that. So Correct. a little bit more normal rhythm, 
this week because we were out of that cycle a little bit, but I think probably next week we'll be fully back to normal. But I'll right. tell you what, it feels normal enough when we've got the lovely Athena kicking us off, man. So we get a, a fun promo that I'm going to kind of save for the end a little bit. Um, but we kick it off with Athena with Billy Starks, of course, in her corner, defeating Allison K. She mm-hmm. wins with an O face after Allison K cuts off an O face attempt, which I really, really liked the end there. And I also just like that we got something a little bit different. I think we're starting to see Athena transform from squashing local talent, squashing local talent to putting over people in losses like Diamante, like we saw. Yep. Um, and here, Allison K, her reputation kind of precedes her Ring of Honor appearance, right? She talks in her yep. promo about uh, having her debut there in, in 2012, which I thought was really cool. And Allison K, physically a bigger competitor and also a champion in another promotion. So I just really liked that we had a little bit more meat on the bone. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was really refreshing in this match. I loved Allison K hitting this spin out face buster into an ankle lock that was just like beautifully, beautifully executed. And then post match, Athena wants Billy Starks to throw K into the belt and Billy Starks refuses. So continuing that story a little bit, but what did you think of the match? I'm going to smush all the promos together a little bit. Uh, I love a lot to love here uh, in all of this angle. Athena continues to be the MVP of Ring of Honor. She's drug our friend Billy Starks in there, which is making it even better. Starks being like reluctant, but also like, oh, this is cool. It's Athena. She's the champ. But also like Athena's probably going to punch me in the mouth at some point. It's like <laughs> a really great story to tell. I love how they put over Allison K. Big fan of Allison K. I want this to be the Hex, bringing Marty Bell like ASAP because they're a great tag team. But I love how they, you know, get over the point of Alan K is not just some local talent. She's not just the person here to get beat by Athena. She has a pedigree. She has a long list of accomplishments. She's been all over the world and she's one to watch. And that just added the little extra uh, point to this match because we've seen Allison K on the podcast, uh, not on the podcast, on this show before. Oh, Grapsity and- <laughs> just gets everyone. Allison K is coming over. Jeez. No. <laughs> we've seen Allison K on Ring of Honor before, and it's like I kind of felt like they should have got this point over like they did today before because it was like, well, this is Allison K. Like, let us know who she is. And today they let us know who she is. Capped off by a really fun match with Athena, uh, not just, like you say, in a squash match. Uh, great back and forth. Showed the power of Allison K. Showed that she deserves to be in there. And a great finish. Anytime uh, Athena busts out the O-face, because she saves it now, Kate. It's not just every single match, because it's brutal-looking moves still. Every time she does it, I'm like, that hurts you, too. Like, what's going on? So, yeah. <laughs> but a uh, great finish, I thought. Look, sometimes ladies don't hit the O face every time. You know what I mean? Sometimes the hey ladies <laughs> aren't Let's so see. lucky to All have right, that happen right. every single Touché. time. However, Touché. we do Touché. Here tonight, <laughs> but we do like it. And you guys also liked this match. We got some love coming in from you. Uh, Matthew Hook saying, Billy beating Athena. I like that we're getting stories. Yes, we're getting a few stories. Yeah. And what I like not only about this Billy Starks story is it could be her. But it feels less obvious that it's her because we're seeing people like Diamante get built up, though it seems like she's kind of maybe moved over to collision. But we're seeing Layla Hirsch come along. Um, We've got Lady Frost in the mix now. Mm -hmm. Trisha Dora, they could put a fire under any time that they want to. So (laughs) Why did they put her fire out? Why did they put it out? I know. I know. It's kind of like she never fully got back on a track after having got a New Japan. But I like the move to join the infantry. I, I'm hoping that we see her get some some big move, moves and wins here soon coming up. But it I, I like that we have multiple real feeling contenders now, so it doesn't feel right. so obvious like that's the person to beat Athena. I also don't know if she's in ROH right now. Maybe they bring someone else in here. Reg, do you have any thoughts? Because this is something we've visited time over time, but now it's starting to feel like maybe we're getting a little bit more real with this. I don't know what's going on here, Kate. It's like, uh, it's, uh, Athena's very confusing and, and as a whole. You know, it's like, she shouldn't be here still. We shouldn't still be seeing her in this position with Billy Starks because she should be up there, collision, main roster, something doing this thing. But 
while she's here, she's amazing at it. Uh, I don't know. They well, they have contenders, but they don't have the contender yet. Like there's people right. that I believe in, but there's nobody that is the one to do it yet. And I don't know who that's going to be. This is kind of a, a company wide problem, honestly. It's not just Ring of Honor. It's all of AEW of like, who's the next one? Who's the one that's next up? So we're uh, in multiple facets. We're looking for this person. Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting because I feel like if you did want to give it to a Layla Hirsch or a Billy Starks, there's no better way to make them immediately, right? Than to have Correct. them beat Athena. So yes. I feel like there's options there if they want to make, it all kind of goes back to the same thing, right? Of does ROH have its own identity? Right. If they do, I feel like it should be a Layla, Layla Hirsch or a Trisha Dora or someone that's like been working there, kind of coming up through the ranks a little bit. Because I would love to see the transition from... AEW talent having titles to ROH feeling talent having titles, yes. but who knows, right? Like the, the market is so kind of interesting right now. There's, I, I think the X factor for me is impact contracts always run so weird and they have the best women's talent, right? Yeah. So it's like someone might just come over from there. Like it doesn't seem to be Jordan Grace. Seems like she's back, no. but like, I think Deanna Perazu signed, but it, it just feels like talent cycles out of impact a lot. And that's kind of where you could pull from, or of course, from the indie. So it's an interesting little thing that we get to revisit. Uh, but we also get to visit a chat from Meet Normus, who let me tell you, had a big day Sunday. He had a big day Sunday. Oh, yeah. His second birthday. Because oh, yeah. big meaty men were slapping meat. We were getting holy meat chants and meat forever chants. Mm -hmm. He says, stop partners. <laughs> is Swerve the first Black AEW champion? Yes. Or does Hobbs, Scorpio, or Keith Lee have a chance to jump him? Still dancing. Meet forever. I think it's Swerve. It's I Swerve. Think... Yeah. yeah. Swerve is the one out of that list that you said. And some of them in that list ain't going to be the one. My big homie Hobbs will be the AEW world champion one day. But as far as right now, Swerve is on that trajectory. Some big things are coming. Big, big things. Yeah, and it just feels that way even with him working at the top of the card, right? We opened mm -hmm. this feud with Adam Page. I feel like that's a former champion. You're going to see him kind of starting to to pick and pull his way into the main title yeah. picture sooner than maybe a Keith Lee or a Hobbs, who I think is going to be feuding with Miro for a little bit. I hope. I hope that gets run back like three times. I'm so the excited. only one that's, uh, that is in that same thing will be Starks, Ricky Starks. I think he has the potential to get to the AEW World Championship uh, in a timely manner, but I don't know if it'll be before Swerve. Right, and it's kind of interesting now because I, I, it feels like maybe they just X out the whole real world's champion thing, yeah. but you could have him like him winning that and having a unification match with MJF or someone mm -hmm. to transfer it. There's a lot of interesting opportunities there with Ricky Stark. So kind of depends on what you mean by the world championship. I think you're talking about the triple B as of right yep. now. So good stuff there. But we move along to Tony Nice and Silas Young. Silas Young coming back into the picture is you had kind of said before, like, huh, that feels like a bit of a random match. And <laughs> Kind of is, but it does continue the Tony Neese story, which honestly, like, I thought this was one of the better Tony Neese matches that we've seen in a little bit. I think yeah. Silas Young is a great worker, but this kind of let him pull out some of the more technical stuff that we can see Tony Neese do. And we get Silas Young here trying to roll Neese up, but Neese kicking out um, and sending Young into the ring post and Neese hits the running knees for the win. This is a good little match considering it was kind of just a throwaway. We still got Mark Sterling getting involved and causing all sorts of shenanigans as to be expected. We also got Tony Nese talking about, uh, you know, his his fitness and that the people of Chicago are not necessarily maybe the most fit. I want to know what super fit paradise Tony Nese is. All right. Because this Seriously. is a marathon. We're a little bit of beast, all right? I what crowd are you going to go to that's going to be to your liking? Because yeah. it's a lot of them that aren't making the cut, I think. Yeah, I don't know what his expectations are for these things, but <laughs> I thought this match was a whole heck of a lot of fun. It's kind of nice to see Tony Nice feel like 
a contender getting some wins under his belt. I don't right. think he's probably going to be your next champion, but he's a great guy if you wanted him in a tournament to feel more important than he usually does, mm -hmm. to have him not getting thrown out of a battle royal first, which is like kind of his <laughs> alley, it always seems like. But him getting wins to make other people feel important by transference, I think is a good spot for him, Rich. Yeah, this is funny because I feel like this is what should have been happening the whole time. They had enough room and time and space to to build guys like Tony Nese into exactly what you're saying. So when it's time to have like important number one contenders matches or things like that, you guys, you got guys like Tony Nese to do it. I like that they finally got around to it. Cause I think Tony Nese is a very talented person. And I think it's showing with the little bit of the crowd getting into it. It's the end of the night. It's hard, but he's still bringing some of them around to his little shtick. So I'm really excited about that. And uh, one, because he deserves it. And two, because there needs to just be more characters. And he's going with this 2005 Simon Dean thing. So I'm all in on it. I like it. I think it's great content. Silas Young is another person that's just a, a ROH original type that guy that can represent in a good spot like this. So getting Tony Nese some wins is good. And over a guy like uh, Silas Young is even better. Yeah, I feel like Silas Young, if you know the brand, you know that he feels important enough to it that getting a win over him means something. And mm -hmm. if you're less familiar with the brand, you can kind of just look at that guy and just be like, he's a grizzled veteran. He brings something with him whenever he's in the ring. So right. really, really, really good stuff there. Um, I am excited. I hope this is true. Brandon McMullen saying that Caprice Coleman revealed tonight on a new episode of Ring of Honor commentary that Allison K is the newest addition to oh. the ROH Women's Division. That's I great. hope that's the case. I didn't see that, but yeah. let's hope so because she's a, a great piece to add in there. Uh, that would be, honestly, that would be interesting. Would be Bring in Marty, boys. Yes, please bring in Marty Bell. <laughs> I tweeted if they want to put it on a t-shirt, I think they should support hex workers. Yes. Always support hex workers. Yes, yes. They're Let's great. Let's do it. Bring I'm buying that t-shirt as soon as I can. I'm a little but saucy if... at the beginning of the show, I gotta say. <laughs> it's been a little bit, but <laughs> <laughs> but if that's true, no, Allison deserves it. She's a, a great contender, a great spot. She kind of reminds me of Taya in a sense that uh, they kind of work the same and they kind of have like the same kind of background and that they are great to any kind of locker room. So that's a great addition. I really like that comparison. That's a, a good call. They do work similarly and she's just um, she's always so good. I'm always so impressed with men or women who are kind of bigger in their respective divisions, mm -hmm. their ability to sell while still maintaining looking intimidating is something exactly. that I feel like is an underrated part of their arsenal. And she's yep. great at that. I think Miro is one of the best, but like she on the, on the women's side, I don't know if I've seen anybody capture that better of making herself look affected without minimizing um, kind of her stature and, and her right. athleticism. With that wrestlers regard. that are smaller than her, which is like, yes. that's a feat. That's a big feat. That's a, that's an experienced and good professional wrestler right there. Mm -hmm. We love to see that. We do have a little spike in viewership as tends to happen around the 915 mark. So I will just remind you to get in your super chats and your humper chats. If there's anything you want, read on the air or any questions that you may have that you want answered we'll also remind you that the go home to emergence is on the back half of this show with cresta and joel impact building to a strong pay-per-view kevin knight and leo rush sign me up for that any day of the week they got some good stuff going the knockouts are always cooking over there um i'm i'm excited i really hope we get diana and julia at some point in the near mm -hmm. future mm -hmm. so fingers mm -hmm. crossed Love to see that. But we've got a lot to love here on ROH, including this Dalton Castle promo. I just love this guy, man. He's <laughs> he's out here just throwing out fun-sounding words for the hell of it. He's like, do you know what a smorgasbord is? And he's mm -hmm. like, I'm not talking about charcuterie. Mm -hmm. He's talking about everything that's going on in ROH. Lexi's backstage with him, and he's complaining about Samoa Joe and Stokely Hathaway, and he's just chugging this bottle of water and saying mm -hmm. that, everybody's getting their hands on his boys this is a whole bunch of fun Dalton's such a standout and I'm interested because I feel like it's possible he could be in any title picture really you've got the trio's titles that he could join with the boys you could throw him easily into the world or the tv title contendership picture but whenever he works at AEW he also gets these pretty big pops like people yeah. know who this guy is mm -hmm. and that's awesome to see and there's not a ton in AEW with like the same 
grounded goofiness that Dalton Castle can bring. And I, mm -hmm. I think he could add a really fun flavor up on the main roster. Uh, what did you think of this promo? And also, what do you feel like might be happening for Dalton Castle? Do you think there's a plan for him somewhere? Um, I love this promo was hilarious. Him chugging the drink and Lexi's trying to get him to talk, but he's still drinking. The drink is just like great stuff. He was uh exactly what Dalton Castle is, kind of like he's joke he he's joking, but you take him serious. He's not a joke. Like he tells jokes, but you take him serious as a wrestler. And I think that's why he would work well if they like invested on in him up there. But it feels like here that they've been, he's the only one that they've been really building towards Samoa Joe. Like he's the only one that's been saying Samoa Joe's name every single week, kind of saying that he's been screwed out of the, the world television championship and kind of staking his claim as trying to be the next one, which means, I mean, maybe he'll be the one to beat Samoa Joe. I don't know. Like uh, my favorite thing in pro wrestling is when somebody actually calls somebody out, even if you're not in a feud with someone, you should want to be the champion. You should say the champion's name. You should stake your claim out here. And Dalton Castle has continued to do that. I think he might be the one. I don't know. I don't know. It could be a detractor to get me off and somebody else is going to be the one, but it's looking pretty good for Dalton right now. So I'll throw this out there because SP3 said it last week and I agree that sometimes when Tony Khan gets married to longer term plans, he has yeah. a bit of trouble flipping the switch. And so SP3 thinks it's Mark Briscoe coming back to dethrone Samoa Joe, mm. which I don't hate that idea. I know that injury initially had looked pretty severe, but I think it ended up being maybe better than they had initially thought. So fingers crossed that we just get to see Mark Briscoe back in action soon, but I feel like it would be really rejuvenating for the product, not only to get one of these titles on one of these ROH feeling guys and gals, but I think it would go a long way too, just because Dalton has so much personality and he can do so much. And at the end of the day, he's a really, really good wrestler. Like yeah. whenever he's in the ring, it almost does that thing where it catches you by surprise of like, oh damn, like that bag ring looks good. Like mm -hmm. he knows what he's doing in there. This is a whole heck of a lot of fun. So I'm I'm in with you on wanting it. I do have hesitations about uh, whether it's actually going to be him because SP3 is right. It might be Mark Briscoe if and when he's ready. Yeah. But we will see. We will see. I I was kind of thinking it might have been Shane Taylor, but that was obviously not the case. So yeah. <laughs> here we are. Here we are again. Shame on us for thinking that one. I know. My hope, my heart, my And they rushed through heart. it, Kate. They rushed through it. We didn't get to get the big in-ring promo together like we wanted. So I know. Uh. I know. We got that really great Shane Taylor promo kind of talking about the, the era's passing. I don't know if you saw it last week. I did. But Okay, yeah, yeah it was, I thought it was great him saying, yeah. like, when I was champion, all anybody could talk about was the old days, and now right. look at us, like, the old guys are around, and I can call you out right now, was really, mm -hmm. really, really good stuff. So um, I hope that there's more to come from Shane Taylor in ROH, that's for sure. Right, but Samoa Joe is uh, having a pretty good time over there on AEW TV, so I see, I understand. He's just the best, man. He's so, good. He's, he's so damn good. Like, and I will say, like, he's been around a lot more than like Claudio or the tag team champions that are literally never around. Like, yeah, it is really, really, really nice to see that. Like, he does at least come back. And on a collision taping schedule, he should hypothetically be able to work that, right? So correct. Good stuff there. Confusing stuff around the corner here, though, in our Spanish announce project. Uh, Kate, what is this? <laughs> lightning fast defeat of Adam Priest and um, Shaft. Shout out to Adam Priest. Love Adam Priest. Adam Priest is great. Mm -hmm. uh, didn't get to showcase a whole heck of a lot here, but we did get to kind of see his size to get control of Serpentico a little bit. But Angelico wins with the knee bar. And this is like three wins in a row for the SAP. And I have a couple of problems with it. First of all, what the heck? Second of mm -hmm. all, there's been nothing different about them other than they just got booked to win. There was no character trajectory from constant squash to now dominant force. Um, <sighs> nothing happened in between there to cause this transition. They just started winning. Um, so I don't love that. I think Angelico is great. Like, yes. I, I really think if this is a way to get him split off, maybe from the rest of SAP of like, 
he's going to be a force in the TV title picture at some point, or him I'm and in. Blake Christian are going to tag or whatever. Like, I think there's a, a good play there, but to just be like, oh, no, actually, they're great. It's, it's kind of nuts without any sort of story or explanation. What do you think of this squash? But kind of more importantly, I guess, what what's going on here? Are we going to be seeing, is this for MJF and Adam Cole to come and squash them at some point? Like, what are we doing here? This exactly what you're saying is exactly what I was thinking when they were like, oh, they're on a win streak. I was like, why? Why in the world are these guys on a win streak? Nothing against them. But like, first of all, that name, I'm never going to get used to that name. That's Joel no. and jo- Jose Maximo. That's forever going to be a thing. You can't situation, be yeah. the Spanish announce anything because that's those guys. Still weird. But I like Angelico, a big Lucha Underground fan, so I do understand I would like him to get his thing off. But his partner has been getting jobbed out consistently on for this years. program that Literally we watch. Years. <laughs> on, yeah, for years. But on this program, with a mask and sometimes without a mask. Like, what's going on here? Why are we watching this guy? Now they're uh, contenders for what? Like Kate saying, are they going to be for Adam Cole and MJF? No, dude, that's not a match that anyone in the world wants to see so yes i was watching this match very confused as to why they were not only are did they have this streak but commentary was getting over that they have this streak too which means like why are you putting focus on this weird stuff all around so weird very very weird and also luther's there now so why aren't they a trio like (laughs) there's there's a lot of odd stuff happening there now i do want to clarify this a shock saying that I hate the snake man. It's not that at all. It's not that I hate the snake man. I just, I don't, I don't want to get on Nyla's bad side. Okay. That's true. So be cool. Yeah. We're going to be good. critical of it. I on like it show. on this side with Nyla. I'm not going to, I can't. Yeah, no, we're not, side. we're not going to cross Nyla. Okay. And just keep it chill. We're not, not going to, we're going to sit here and we're going to criticize Serpentico. We know who's good graces. We want to stay. And that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Simple for me. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Fancy Plus has a question for you, Reg. Ah. Hindsight, is it that impressive to make Punk cry? Oh, is, yeah. is one of the uh, 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 funnier oh. chats he's ever done. <laughs> uh, Great question. I think it actually is. Because, yeah, great question, Maddie Plus. Uh, I'm going to say it is because you evoked genuine sentimental emotion and not griping. So there I'm going to say it's still impressive of you. He wasn't angry. He was not angry trying to fight anybody for at least that moment. You know what I mean? And, like, it is impressive <laughs> knowing what happens after he does a presser. Like, I, I didn't invoke him to go fight, like, the EVPs of his company. So that's pretty It's impressive. true. It's true. I think... Oh my God! Maybe you're the glue that holds it all together. I oh come on, you guys! Dang, good call, man. Good call. There's a there's a part on our super chat document that's just called Punk Slander. Let's not like <laughs> let's not keep that going. No, but I do appreciate that. That's what that. <laughs> I'm good with my regular co-host Philip Lindsay and how I had to go through everything right next to him. I can't. We're done here. No more it's punk talk. Much. It's too much. <laughs> It's too much. <laughs> well, we move along to uh, Akira Hogan interview that I thought was really good. I feel like she has kind of really found her footing here in ROH. She was mm-hmm. lost a little bit after the baddies breakup, but I liked this interview that we get. We always get so much fire out of her, and it's a whole heck of a lot of fun. Yeah. Kind of just continuing along the, the path here. Felt like they kind of dropped her after the uh, Chicago street fight. She's back mm-hmm. in Chicago giving this promo ish maybe we don't know if she was really in chicago giving this promo but whatever mm-hmm. uh any any thoughts on what we got out of kira hogan uh kira hogan was another person that joined us on stage for Starcast oh. for a little bit so i mean great segue over there uh that was amazing she's super cool and uh i'd like to see her be successful out here because she deserves it um i think she's a underrated promo so giving her a promo is really good and she just needs more match time to showcase Agreed, agreed. And we are continuing to build out the, I should mention what the promo was. We're continuing to build out the story <laughs> between her and Layla Gray, which I, yeah. I think is a fun one. She has the in-ring experience to kind of help Layla Gray along. She's very new to wrestling. Um, right. But she has a presence about her too. Uh, they obviously have the baddie story built in yep. there, which I, I like a lot. So 
Good stuff from Kara Hogan. And I also liked this tag match that we got featuring your favorite Sky Blue and Willow Nightingale versus the Renegade Twins, Charlotte and Robin. And I actually really liked what we got ring-wise, particularly the finish, which was a whole heck of a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, I know not only did we get your favorite Sky Blue, but we also got uh, Ian rapping, which was by Willow's mm -hmm. demand and yeah. yours, I'm sure. But mm -hmm. some good, good stuff. I loved the way that they gave Sky Blue the win here. And I honestly don't know if they're building Sky Blue or if they just are in Chicago so much that she keeps getting wins because she's from <laughs> Chicago. But we get a pounce into a huge uh, spine buster. There were a couple really big spine busters from Willow in this that I loved for a near fall. But the Renegades coming back with rolling elbows for a near fall and Blue cutting off the pin and getting that code blue in it. It, it looked really crisp and... um However, this was all agented, just really, really worked. Like, yeah, it, it felt very clean and um, not like, oh, my gosh, she's over here and she's over here. Like, it just felt very cohesive and, and well executed down the stretch here. A lot of Willow showcasing, which you love to see. Um, good, a good use of the Renegade twins who are don't look alike. They're so mm -hmm. you can't do twin magic and we don't have a tag division. So nice to see some of these women's alliances making sense a little bit here. What were your thoughts? Um, yeah, I think this was uh we're in Chicago. Let Sky Blue get a big win because she's on all the AW shows and she's great. Um, seeing Willow and Sky Blue together, I think they're a really cool team. Uh, she Willow is just bright. She brightens up any room. She's amazing. She's the best. And uh, I think they should honestly, I know we talk about it pretty often, expand on this uh, Ring of Honor women's uh, tag team thing. Like, have more. There's more on the indies. There's more out there. There's more that you could put together. Let's do more of this. I, I liked it. I think it's fun. I think the Renegade Twins are just a super fun tag team. I've talked about them very often. Let them and the Hex and a couple of these other teams be the forefront runners of your uh, new Ring of Honor women's tag division. It would be really cool, and let's let's be clear. I feel like every wrestling card should be booked to my taste and my taste alone. So of this course. is this is what I want. Yeah. Um, I think it would be really cool if Maria Canellas built out a women's Ring of Honor tag team tournament. Like maybe you don't have belts that you feel comfortable building out an entire division, but just doing a tournament with a cup that could establish something annually until you get to that point. I think it'd be really, really fun. And I'm calling for Maria because she did wonders with that division before the shutdown with Ring of Honor. And sure she did, did such a good job of pulling in like diverse, like there was a lot of diversity in that from not only like a representation standpoint, but a um, types of wrestler standpoint, like mm -hmm. more entertainment, more hard hitting, more sports based more acrobatic like there was so much across the board that she was really able to weave in there um so i'm i'm calling on her to do it i'm laying down the challenge to the beautiful maria canellas right there yep well, maria's gonna do it look there's we, we more in her. There, you can be doing more than hanging out with weird people with milk obsessions that's all i'm saying we're gonna get there too we're gonna get there too but guys get in your super chats and your humper chats we got the impact post show on the other end of this they're going home to emergence a really strong card tonight uh, really strong card going into the pay-per-view too. Some stuff that you love to see here and some things that we got over here, I tell you. Uh, we move along to the <laughs> six-man tag team championships proving ground match. I got some I got some qualms. Okay. Yep. Defeating Griff Garrison, Metal Leak, and Gravity. Okay. You know I'm a nerd and I love rules and I love yep. proving ground matches. Mm-hmm. Literally nobody has won a proving ground match, I don't think, since we rebooted. Mm. So I love stakes and I love proving ground matches and the way that they can earn people title shots. However, if no one ever wins one, it's not that great. But of course, these weren't gonna be the guys to do it. This is Griff Garrison, Metal Leak, and Gravity smooshed together in a trio that's not actually a trio mm -mm. who are we building to challenge for these six man belts it's not that hard it can't it cannot be this hard you gotta have some contender here yeah it's funny because it seems like the light skin coalition is gonna be the one to eventually do it like i keep feeling like they're the ones that are going to be the ones to be next up. Some iteration of the Light Skin Coalition of Darius Martin, 
uh, Action Andretti and whoever was back there that, you know, this, you know, that. Well, today that. was the best friend. So <laughs> they were like, OK, on the lines, like, I don't know, like big tans today. Oh, they can make it. Yeah, they'll work. So. I don't know. Lord almighty. Uh, <laughs> by the way, SB3 made two observations. One, the exact same one here, that they just choose another black guy around. Yep. And two, also made the Austin Theory study comparisons. I don't yeah. know if you guys DM, nope. but it was hysterical. I was you like, I don't even it. feel like I swapped out hosts here. It was no. ridiculous. <laughs> no cooperation or anything. It's just you. he has eyes. <laughs> That's it. That's true. That is a good point. <laughs> We got a chat coming in from Matthew Hooks. Thanks for being so supportive. Saying six man champs, infantry, and Willie Mack. Interesting. But I, like I we're gonna talk about it in a minute, but I really like that idea. Like I like Willie Mack and the infantry kind of coming together. I do think they're waiting for Dante Martin to come back. And when Dante comes back, they'll yeah. win those six man titles. Right. But like build up anyone else in the meantime. <laughs> Like, you don't have to just wait till, like, okay, no other teams till then. Like, we could have another couple teams till then. That's true. That's true. I mean, a decent enough match here. I don't want to, to bury the match. I'm just burying the reason we were having it. Mm -hmm. Prince Mama, of course, an artist. Um, but Metalik with a fantastic rope walk sent on for a near fall. Um, and then this match just kind of breaks down into the brawl. And the embassy finishes Metalik with an elevated splash from Leona. Uh, adding a little bit to their finisher, adding a little bit more. So cool to see them continue to evolve, but evolve into what from what is still kind of to be determined here. Metalik, you missed, uh, I don't know if you guys to stay alive or not, but Metalik and Zack Sabre Jr. having their um, Cruiserweight Classic rematch tournament was so, so good uh, mm -hmm. to kick off the show. Nice to see Metalik back in the picture here. Nice for commentary to refer to that. Um, but kind of weird to go from, contendership and new japan title to i'm in a random trio this week yep. good not great um match was match was fine but this felt like we had some stories today and then we had the unplanned smushed together part of the show this was part of the unplanned put smushed together part of the show right yeah totally totally it's like the embassy, the mogul embassy guys are really good, so they can continuously do these matches like that, and they're going to be fun. But eventually, like, they haven't defended the championships. They haven't, like, half the time they're not even together. Sometimes they're a tag team. Like, it's like, there's a lot going on. Let's figure it out here. It does feel like they're trying to get to Dante Martin, but when is Dante Martin? If that's in five more months, dude, we cannot do this for five more months. I don't know how long it's going to be, but we got to figure something out. And it feels like you're telling 20 different stories of Brian Cage. First, he's over here with Big Bill. We like him with Big Bill, but then he's over here still with the Mogul Embassy by himself when half the time he's on TV without uh, Toa and uh, and Khan. So it's like, what's going on here? But I again, when you put these guys in the ring and just let them power bomb people and German suplex them on their neck, it's great viewing content i like it yeah they're great in the ring there's no doubt about that it's a lot of fun to watch them but watch them doing what exactly what? It's kind, of, <laughs> kind of the next part right so we move on to kira hogan defeating layla gray paying off that promo that we were discussing earlier before yep. i like this like i i do i think it, kira hogan has been underrated since she came in she was just not on tv and then she was a baddie and then she was a baddie who wasn't really wrestling um, she's really good in the ring. So it's just refreshing to see her get some reps in here. I thought this was great. This is another thing where it's like, okay, we're getting stories again in this women's division. We're starting to see who top contenders are, right? I think we know Layla Hirsch is. I think we know Kira Hogan is. Um, there's there's some good stuff developing in this. What did you think of this match uh, tonight? Uh, I Again, I love that promo that was from earlier. I love how they're kind of tying the story together. That's like people, I mean, people weren't like, I hope that they pay off the baddies thing, but it's like cool that they're paying off the baddies thing here. And uh, anytime Kira can get a win and kind of establish herself some more is great because again, like we got to tell her before the show, that match with Athena was insane. Uh, the, yes. the Chicago street fight. And it's right. like, I, I we kind of thought that after that she was gonna you know continue doing that and she hasn't gotten the chance to 
but it looks like they might be reinvested in her. So like, let's continue. If this is the way up there, they're giving her promo time. They're giving her a match. Like, let's just keep doing this. One thing that I appreciated tonight that we got to was just like more story with that. Um, I feel like we've been getting so many only backstage promos that I would like to see them expand formats in the promos that they're delivering. True. But I do feel like we're at least getting some more promos that are actually building and leading to something. Oh my goodness. If it isn't the wonderful, beautiful Miss Denise Salcedo <laughs> popping in to send some wow. love. Well, thank, thank you, you Denise. Denise. Oh my god! I think she's supposed to be on vacation, isn't she? Get on vacation. No, no, no. Though. She's all. She's working on going on vacation. She's gonna she's turn her phone off when she's on vacation. She I better. Hope she does. Thanks, Denise. You're the best. The wonderful, incredible Denise Salcedo, who is an mm. absolute rock star. Um, go support her and her channel. But she uh, in ten days. <laughs> look at look, in ten days. She says she's got vacation in ten days. You better turn her. all the electronics off, Denise. No cell phone. No laptop no nothing no wrestling no disconnect from mm -hmm. everything but i uh i don't know if she's announced it yet so i'm not gonna announce it but she had me on her channel with the the lovely alex queen of the ring uh to do some some fun work so mm -hmm. that was an absolute blast she's always she's just such a force man like yeah what she does in the space and for women in the space like oh my god how cool is Denise? oh yeah i like all those peoples i'm still trying to do more potting with alex alex if you're watching this let's get together for some potting that was aggressive but i appreciate it she's Sorry. great <laughs> <laughs> from one I mean, she likes it aggressive i don't know that might sound <laughs> sound like me at the beginning of the show earlier with the old face comments but i'm saying we move from the beautiful wonderful incredible denise salcedo to the beautiful wonderful incredible maria whose interview backstage uh regarding griff garrison and what she was kind of setting up for him last week and cole carter who is wearing an i love hot mom shirt that is his whole character right now and i am so bored and find this extremely cringe uh, I do not care about this in the slightest. I do care about Griff Garrison. I'm glad he's back, and I'm glad that there's a place for him in ROH. Like, I know Brian Pillman went on to do Brian Pillman Jr. We know what Brian Pillman's fate was. Brian Pillman Jr. has moved on to NXT. But... Jesus. <laughs> Things are going off the rail, I think. <laughs> You know what? Listen, I can only watch so many six man matches. Come on, dude. Like, Embassy what do you guys want from us? People, all right. <laughs> I have to do this on Tuesdays, man. We we just go nuts because what are we going to talk about? But we got right. some good stuff tonight. Yes. No complaints here, but uh, I, I'm just not in on this Cole Carter character. I've, I've said kind of time and time again, like, I think he'll find it. This ain't it for me. I think being paired with. Uh, <laughs> slandering people loving hot moms and moms. i'm saying come on like like i'm not just right here it's come true on. it's true look it's it's not <laughs> it's not loving hot moms it's not it's cole carter loving hot moms okay yes, it's, right. it's specifically the way this is rolling out i think it's very wonderful that you want to support hot moms everywhere I think you have to I you admit. have to if you don't it support is. hot moms you're weird I think we both went to take that chat down at the same time and both put it back up on the screen at the same time, which I love because it meant we're not done talking about Reg's love of hot moms. I hot moms, it. one more time. I need to say it out loud. Hey, hot moms. <laughs> off the rails, you guys. Come on. <laughs> You're going to keep giving us these non-existing mogul embassy title matches. <laughs> That's it. That's, That's it. Get. You know what? We're just going to talk about hot moms. Tell us your favorite hot mom in the chat. Doesn't even have to be a wrestling hot mom. You know what I mean? Oh, Reg is going to tell us his favorite hot no, mom. No, 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 no. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. <laughs> sure you can. Come on. There's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot. The list mm -hmm. is Jericho. I don't want to right exclude there. anybody. Yeah, I don't want to leave anybody You don't want to hurt your feelings. Yeah. I get you. I get you. I it's respect tough. it. It's tough. We're going to not talk about Cole Carter and Hot Moms anymore. We are going to talk about the infantry and Willie <laughs> Mack defeating August Matthews, Davey Bang, and Jassy of Security Guard Extraordinaire. Uh, this was a lot of fun. Like, I really like the infantry with Willie Mack because they're just, they're different in the right way, right? Like, and Willie Mack 
kind of works differently than just about anybody. Like he, he, he really does. And to see him in there with the infantry, I thought was, was fun. I do feel like the infantry is a great tag team and they should work in the tag team division. We got a lot of that tonight with this crossover stuff that I'm not a fan of. I want to know who is on what rosters and what divisions they're in. It's been a persistent complaint of mine, but as far as the way it unfolded in the match, Reg, I actually thought this was pretty fun. What were your thoughts? Yeah. Um, a lot of homies in this, not only the infantry and Willie Mack, but Jossie. Great. I loved everything about uh, these people here. Another one more StarCast um, plug here. Another people group of people that joined us uh, for our little show was the infantry asking us who our favorite Ring of Honor tag team was and who our favorite just tag team in general was. We did not say the infantry both times, so sorry, you guys. But um, uh, great to see them here on the show. <laughs> Great to see them here. No, as a team, like, I think if we're doing this, I was going to say, I think if we're, no, the infantry is a tag team, dude. Just let them be a tag team. I love Willie Mack. Just have him be a single star. Why are we putting them together like this? They have a trios with Trish. Now you're doing this. I like them all individually. Let's continue them as a tag team because we want to have clear cut things of what's going on. And I think the infantry can be great for the tag division that you need to continue building. So I was just at that point of like, I like this putting together different teams and, and different things. And Willie Mack needs to have his try. He might be a little bit too dark skin for the top flight thing, <laughs> but you know, I, I like them, you know, putting these different pieces together. And uh, I think it's fun. Yeah. I think they have the champagne problem. I guess it's not a champagne problem, but they run into the like the blessed fortune of the fact that they have some of the best wrestlers in the world available to them at any time, exactly. right? So yeah. they can get lazy with stories and the matches are mm -hmm. still going to be great, but I would prefer they just didn't get lazy with stories. That would be yeah. that would be my like, have preference. the great wrestlers and the stories together. Yeah, that's that's all that's all we want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's all we want in this world. Uh, but this was a quick one, too. We got uh, Sean Dean winning with the Russian leg sweep, I believe, was the finish here. Nice to see Jossie in there. Uh, bring Dan Barry in there. Bring the whole security team from WrestleMania on over. We love it. We love yep. it. We get uh, Layla Hirsch defeating Lady Frost here and then kind of telling off Maria Kanellis in what was a, a fun way to go about things. I actually really liked what we got out of Layla Hirsch. I'm a little confused because it feels like every time Lady Frost comes back, it's like, oh my God, Lady Frost is back. And then they're just like, but she is going to lose. And I'm like, yeah. I get that you have to have people lose to build other people. But like, to me, Lady Frost is kind of like Trisha Dora. And like, why are they taking L's if you're trying to make them feel like big contenders? Um, so I didn't like love that, but I thought the match itself was really fun. Commentary did a really good job talking about the stylistic difference and how Lady Frost was having kind of her more fundamentals of wrestling pulled out of her and kind of a, a harder hitting, more aggressive side from uh, Layla Hirsch, like, like bringing that to light, which I thought was really fun. I liked this match. I liked that it got a lot of time. Um, I just hope that there's, there's tracks in here for all the wonderful ladies that we're seeing on TV, but some good, a, a great match. And uh, in the post-match, we get Layla Hirsch blowing off Maria after she and Cole Carter come to the ring. Maybe she's like, I don't really like this hot mom shirt either. Yep. You guys are a joke. I'm uh -huh. Layla Hirsch. But I love that mm -hmm. she said, I'm doing fine. I don't need your help. Like right. very sincerely at Maria, um, which is cool because they already set up the framework that Maria has been helping her get opportunities, right? So it, right. it feels like, she should still need Maria in a sense. What were your thoughts on the match? And then this little post-match angle that we got. Uh, yeah, it's 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 hard because like they were kind of building Lady Frost a little bit. I don't know. They had her bit beat Trish and this. Yeah, it seems like every time she leaves and comes back, they have her <laughs> on this losing streak again. But it's great for Layla Hirsch, I think, which is um, if there's probably three contenders to on the short list to beat Athena, she's up there. So you want to continuously build her and giving her opponents like Lady Frost, I think it's great. This kind of plays on to the reason that I like this story with Layla Hirsch and Maria is it kind of plays on to the real story of Layla Hirsch of people thinking like, oh no, she needs a mouthpiece. She needs someone to talk for her. She needs this thing. And her to be like, 
I don't need any of that. I'm going to come in here and kick ass and get my money and leave. I think it's a great story to tell. So it, it's there's some a little bit of realism in it, which I think expands it. Yeah, I, I like that a lot, too. And I do feel like you could go either way with it. You could have Layla Hirsch not need her or you could have right. her run into something. Maybe Maria Canellas picks somebody else. Maybe she starts managing Allison K, and all of a yep. sudden Layla Hirsch is looking at a giant that she didn't have to do before. So Maria and Allison K, though, hmm, that's a pretty good combo. Yeah, that's not a bad mm. call, right? We don't mm -hmm. hate that idea. Mm -hmm. Don't hate that idea at all. Well, it's Eddie Kingston, partner. Mm -hmm. He's back with Shavada. Defeating Gringo Loco and Blake Christian, who is too good to not be on a clear path in ROH. My God. Yes. Like, you've had him signed. I thought he was great in this match. He always is. But tonight, there was just something about, like, his delivery of stuff and the way he was laying things in. Um, I think he can be so acrobatic, you almost lose sight of how great his wrestling fundamentals are. But, like, this kid is 26, I think. Yeah. My God. He's got a bright future ahead of him. He gets this on every level but tonight it was eddie kingston's and shibata's to win as to be expected i thought this was a whole lot of fun there was something so great about the way shibata worked tonight that just reminds you of why they call him the wrestler right like mm -hmm. the way he was laying in those um punch and chop sequences the way he even just does little things like floats over it's so kind of unique to him but so sports-based pro wrestling-ish like feels almost like that new japan era where it was shoot wrestling fights a little bit mm -hmm. like feels very very much in that vein and pairing him with eddie kingston for this machine gun chops a whole bunch of fun coming out of eddie kingston i think we're going to keep pushing to him and claudio here but a fun tag match i just want blake christian to to be on a path a really fun ending sequence where he hit a 450 springboard which is one of my favorites that there is in the game um, and then hit the frog splash and Eddie Kingston got the knees up. His selling of that was beautiful. Um, really, really good stuff here. What were your thoughts? Yeah, I probably wouldn't put the team GCW of Blake Christian and Gringo Loco in this position. I think both of them, if I were to pick a match for the two of them, Eddie Kingston and Shibata probably wouldn't be the match I'd put them against uh, in against. I probably would put them against each other if I was doing a match. But I understand what's going on. You're trying to kind of build the Eddie Kingston and Shibata thing. Again, uh, reiterate 500 times, seeing Shibata is just insane. He's great. But seeing Eddie Kingston back consistently has been so refreshing. He's just, everything he does is amazing when he uh works when he does suplexes when he does backhands when he talks of course he's one of the best in the world and so uh it seems like they're setting eddie kingston up to come and beat this man for this ring of honor world championship i don't know he's he has some big hatred for him and uh we got a big show coming up in uh arthur ash stadium in new york i think that's a pretty good time you know for somebody you know that really loves new york I'm going to cry. If I get to see Eddie <laughs> Kingston win the ROH title at Grand Slam, just ugly cry. I mean, yes. where else, Kate? Where else? I mean, on an ROH pay-per-view, I guess, but yeah, Grand Slam, you know. man, like, <laughs> if I go from being harassed about chicken tenders one year to getting to see Eddie Kingston, that's my, I'm finishing my story, okay? That's my but triumph. what if you go get chicken tenders during Eddie Kingston's? <laughs> well, here's the thing. I'm vegan now. They bullied me. Boom! There it is. <laughs> Unless they got like some cauliflower bullshit, I don't think that's a danger of it. But... In your face, hey, them cauliflower wings be hitting though. They're not bad. It's mm -hmm. not a bad substitute. Yeah. It's just, it's just not the same. It's not the same at all. But I mean, you know, you got. I'm to. surviving. I'm surviving. Yeah. yeah. Good yeah. stuff here. Shibata winning with the Pele kick. Um, just incredible what he's been able to do in this leg of his career. It's, it's so awesome. And to your mm -hmm. point, we never take it for granted. Princey no. wild stuff. Uh, we move on to an ROH World Championship Proving Ground match with Claudio Castagnoli defeating Lee Johnson. We got a promo earlier that um, he says, like, he's big shotty Lee and all he needs is his one shot. Nobody wins Proving Ground matches, which kind of makes them null and void. Reg, it feels like a way for them to just make matches shorter, which I don't necessarily yeah. love. <laughs> But interesting strategy. Fine enough. 
Yeah, I don't think this should be the guy to do it again. Like, I, I, I don't think it's probably like his time. But he was uh, in what did she call them? I can't say it. I can't. <laughs> I have no right to be calling anybody light skinned. But the light skin coalition. <laughs> I am whiter than white. I'm the whitest uh-huh. white girl, but he was with Top Flight last week, and so now he's now he earns a proving ground shot. I don't know. Very odd, but Castagnoli hitting the Swiss death uppercut for the win. This was a lot of fun. I mean, Claudio being in action on ROH television is a refreshing change. Yeah. Um, hopefully they kind of build out some more substantive stuff for him, but it's just nice to see our champion around, Reg. Yeah, great to see Claudio doing his thing. I think anytime that he's here, even if he's in these people that probably shouldn't be in Proving Ground matches, Proving Ground matches, it's just fun to see him on display. And uh, I like Lee Johnson. I think he's a really talented guy, and um, seeing more of him is always a plus. So this is all around pretty good. Um, Being able to be on display against Claudio, I think, is better for Lee Johnson. Like, this is one of the matches that he's going to, like, go back and watch 5,000 times to see all the cool things he gets to do or what he can do to improve. Uh, This was a proving ground match, not for that championship, but just for Lee Johnson in general. So I think it was a win. You know what? I like that. I'll actually buy that as justification for him being in it because it's more justification than get anywhere else. But he's a great wrestler. It's great to see him in this spot. (laughs) This Barbie is here for Lee Johnson. I'm good. I'll take it. Good stuff. We are coming down the home stretch a little bit, closing out with the last few matches. We'll remind you to stick around for the Impact Post Show. They've got a good go home to talk about. It'll be nice to see Joel and Cresta. I think Joel got to see some of those tapings live as well. Mm. Uh, Trinity making big moves, maybe through Sable. So I don't know. Stick around to hear all about what they've got going on in Impact. Also remind you to subscribe to FightfulSelect.com with all the scoops you could ever want in your whole life, as well as confirming some other stories that were broken today on, on PW Insider, the departure of Ace Steel, things like that. Uh, we got you covered at Fightful, but we got all the scoops in the game that you could possibly want on FightfulSelect.com. Your CM Punk scoops, your Becky Lynch scoops, your contract news. We got it all happening over here. So go ahead and subscribe. You're not only supporting that ecosystem, but you get a bunch of bonus podcasts as well. We appreciate you guys supporting us. But we move on to the Iron Savages who get a funny little in-ring promo that got a little mistimed. They kind of had to rush their last line of it. <laughs> but they defeat <laughs> Caleb Conley and Ren Jones, who I was not familiar with, so I'm, I'm always glad to see independent talent popping up on my screen here but also happy to see the iron savages continuing to to move along here like i i've been screaming about this for a while they win quickly with their elevator drop splash as to be expected but this whole personality revamp is is working for me i like it yeah i like uh the iron savages i think they're great ren jones i think does work out in aaw out there in chicago so it was really cool to see him out there um, getting to have the showcase. The ROH tag team division is quietly being rebuilt into what we kind of want it. They're not saying it out loud and making any emphasis on it, but it's quietly happening. We saw some developments today. Iron Savages are out there. I think the infantry could get away. And there's, there's a bunch of people that are going to make this dope eventually when they get it back together. So anytime you see these guys on here getting the showcase, I think it's good. I agree. I can't wait to see them in a four man uh, with the best friends next week. <laughs> yes. I'm just being a pitcher. Can't I'm wait. very happy. Very happy mm-hmm. to see the Iron Savages. They got some reps on collision as well, but they're just some of the best big men around. Like, they're really, really, really good. And I do like that they kind of have this refreshed personality because i think it differentiates them from like big scary big men that we see kind of a lot of in all of wrestling and in AEW. so they got something that makes them stand out which makes me very happy right we got a quick promo uh with smart mark and it looks like josh woods is going to be hosting an open challenge soon which is cool but kind of odd because he doesn't have a title and there is a title for the division that he competes in Mm -hmm. (laughs) um but we got away from Smart Mark. Now we're back with Smart Mark. 
I do appreciate that they're keeping the team separate. Like, I, I think Tony Nese and Josh Woods should be separate, but like, I don't know, just let Josh Woods go out there and beat people's ass. Let him go out there and hit chaos theories and win matches and, and be awesome. But he, they did clarify that like he's working in the pure division. And I think that's really cool. Like to have a pure division workhorse, that's not just Daniel Garcia or Wheeler Yuta is mm -hmm. refreshing. So I feel like him being kind of a, a stakeholder in the pure division to be putting on pure matches with people that are there with independent talent is a really, really good thing. So I don't want to be too negative on that, but um, maybe consider giving that by the belt if that's going to be the case. <laughs> Open challenge for what, up. dude? What am I yeah. challenging for? <laughs> to face Josh Woods, who's great, but like... <laughs> I don't, did our background just change? What happened actually? here? <laughs> I actually know exactly what happened. Did Sean go live in our stream yard on his Bengals account is what happened. Oh, perfect. Yeah. You cannot do the same brands while you're streaming at the same time. That's very mm. funny. I hope he now has a Kate Elizabeth and Righteous Red yep. one. Mm -hmm. Well deserved. Get your own stream yard account, Sean. All Dude. Right. We're doing something over here. Don't try to talk about football. I'm We're talking to, about I'm wrestling. Trying to, I'm trying to make you money. All right. <laughs> Come on. Uh, any thoughts on on this Smart Mark alliance with Josh Woods? Anything in, in that? Uh, uh, great to see Josh Woods on TV. If this leads to more Josh Woods on TV, that's great. I thought he looked cool standing there during the promo. He did. He looked very cool. He has got cool tattoos and he is a badass. So mm -hmm. we stand Josh Woods. Woods is the goods, baby. Let's yep. go. So we moved to our main event, which was not our world champion for some reason, but was for some reason action and training Darius Martin and the best friends versus the outrunners, who I'm very glad to see getting consistent reps uh, with the workhorsemen, Anthony Henry, JD Drake. You guys know how I feel about the workhorsemen. I adore them. Speaking of Action Andretti, AEW announced that he will be facing John Moxley for the international title at Collision on Saturday, which is pretty cool. Uh huh. Uh, pretty cool from the perspective of I like that we're getting cross programming like that. Like, I don't want to harp too much on the punk stuff, but like him being gone means that there's open locker rooms now, which is great. <laughs> John Moxley can show up on a Saturday without it being a potential fight, which is good. Really, really, really like that piece of it. Um, Action Andretti has not been on some singles run. I don't know why he's getting the shot, but all right. Uh, our main event was was fun, as to be expected. I I wish they would figure out, not only for ROH's sake, but, like, are the best friends an ROH tag team or not? Like, they deserve more. Not only does, like, ROH deserve more, but I feel like the best friends. Um, they should be a trio with Orange Cassidy now that he's dropped the title. Like, that's, yes. that's my thinking. Like, yeah. them versus the acclaimed with Daddy Ass could be, the House of Ass, I guess, mm -hmm. could be, like, a whole bunch of fun as a face-on-face -face program. Um, or they should at least be competing in trios matches like that. Uh, but this match was great. Like, I love Anthony Henry and J.D. Drake so much. I talk about it all the time. Mm -hmm. Darius and Andretti are great. The best friends are great. This this had some fun stuff, but the match breaks down uh, into a flurry that kind of ends with the strong zero from the best friends to get the win. Of course, the varsity team coming to JV is going to get the win here. Not sure what this was really for, but I can't complain that it wasn't a good match. It was a little bit short, but it was fine other than that. Couple of brawl breakdowns and multi man matches today kind of felt like lazy booking a little bit, but mm -hmm. that's where we're at for our main event. I don't know. I would put probably my world champion in that slot, but what you He's think? here. You have the world champion there. on the show. Maybe just like let him be the main event. Uh, find stuff for work here. Like, uh, again, best friends were here. Hey, have a match. Light Skin Coalition, join them. It'll all be great. A lot of great elements here in the match. Uh, I like all of these guys. Uh, just uh, this was like a we're going home, you guys, type uh, match, and like nothing to complain about, but nothing really to bite on to. Yeah, it's just weird when you have both the MVP world champion and Athena and Claudio on the show. I get wanting to open with Athena because it's an attention grabber, but then put your world champion in the main event slot is what right. I would do, especially since this was a smushed together episode. Closing us out with the final super chat, feeling dreepy saying, 
He needs to lose, I think this is in relation to Samoa Joe, he needs to lose the ROH TV title so that some other people can be seen as bigger stars if he's going to be a main character on main shows. Also, Joe should never lose the title because Samoa Joe not having the title is a crime against nature. <laughs> I mean... Somebody else should be it, but he also shouldn't lose? Yeah, I'm. that's how kind of I feel about Athena. I'm like, she can never lose this title, but also it's time for her to move on. Yeah, I guess I agree. My bigger thing is that's exactly what's going on with Claudio. Like, if it was yeah. one or the other, I'm like, all right, I get that. But since both of them are MIA champions in a sense, like, it would be nice if one of them felt like a more Ring of Honor. It's weird to say, like, Samoa Joe's not a Ring of Honor guy because he's so iconic with the brand. But, like, current rendition of Ring of Honor, like, moving this product forward, Ring of Honor, um, so it, it would be nice if one of the two of them at least was around a little bit more. That being said, like Joe's been around to defend a little bit. He's just not there yeah. week over week, but like he's been around, I think because of the strike, like right. sweet tooth, sweet tooth wasn't happening. So mm -hmm. he's, he's been around a little bit, but it is getting a little bit convoluted when you have your ROH champions and not only storylines in AEW, but like top storylines at AEW, like, like Joe and Claudio are. Right. Yeah, they're going to have to uh, do something about it. <laughs> I don't know if there's a better way to say it, honestly. I don't know if there's a better way to say it. So we're going to bring on the Impact crew, who looked like they had a hell of an episode tonight. I hope it was as fun as it looked on paper. What a little glam squad we got with Miss Cresta. Hi, beautiful. I robbed the Joker before we went on air. So here I am. How about a oh smile? <laughs> Joker Sting? It's showtime. I had to think about what one of his catchphrases <laughs> was. I'm like, there's a lot it's of catchphrases. So, so hold on. Give me a second. <laughs> I can't do it. I hit puberty the other week. Uh, so I can't man. do it. <laughs> Unfortunate. Yeah, did anyone make a comment about the two of y'all and your hairstyles going into tonight? That you both had the same top thing going on <laughs> nobody oh. said anything about our top nobody thing. Said, look just... it's 25 degrees out here all right it's warm. I get it. i'm not hating i'm just saying mm -hmm. i was watching i had my my twitter up and i get saw it top it up, up, and i was like <laughs> they dressed in the same like they doing the same hair I... <laughs> where we coordinated are you... <laughs> where are your gloves and why doesn't your hair look like crestus is the better question i feel like joel Real how am i gonna get the memo about the glasses Best I can also, hat. I don't think I can fit into this. Is that Listen, a, I think are I you have putting a, a condom on your head? What's happening? How <laughs> I can put not. a this hat on my head? Hey, listen, listen. We Jean de Claire. <laughs> Hold on, that's cat hair. That's cat. Hold on. Things are breaking down already. <laughs> we, we were off the rails on the ROH show, so this is just a nice continuation. Is it cute? I was, uh, you guys are adorable. <laughs> Somebody, please take a screenshot of that. And put it it's into out. the world. It's all. Uh, that I was, was impact. It's good for the second time. Oh, I, I we mean, get it. Reg is at Starcast, and he already saw some of our ROH matches. And Joel and his whole family went to Impact. Oh my God, I'm mm -hmm. gonna beat up Steve Macklin. No, you're not. You're gonna get your ass beat by Steve Macklin. Yeesh. Okay. He doesn't know where to find me. He's too busy having flight delays to go from Elizabeth, New Jersey to White Plains, New York, when you could just drive to the damn town. I see you, Steve Macklin, coward. Wow. Aggressive, but I got to be honest, the better call as someone who lives in Jersey. <laughs> yeah. Just drive. Don't take that flight. I, 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 it came from Deanna. I don't know where they were coming from or where she was coming from, okay. but she's like, I've had travel delays all day, like a 10-hour delay. I'm like, aren't you like Disgusting. a few hours? It came hours? from Deanna. I already saw all these It's on her Twitter. I'm such an <laughs> impact insider, no, Joel Pearl. No, no, no. Ultimate, Ultimate insider, Joel Pearl. Stop. Stop. Are you telling me a wrestler <laughs> tweeted about having travel delays? No way. A professional wrestler tweeted, tweeted about Never. having travel delays. No way. I know. It's the first time. At least they didn't lose their bags. Otherwise, you'd be hearing all about it for weeks. True. <laughs> This has gone off the rails. <laughs> off the rails. All the way off. Like five minutes into the show, Reg and I were. So it's it's mm -hmm. fine. But we will let you guys get down to it. I hope you had a fun watch of the Go Home Show to Emergence. Stay tuned for the Impact crew. Thank you, guys. Peace out. Victory Road, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. 
they never get it right. I had to fix the stream because they couldn't get it right. It's Love all Kay. good. <laughs> people don't respect people don't put respect on impact's people just name. Don't respect us in impact land. So I get rude. it. I don't I don't respect us either. That's true. That's why I still got in his hat because I don't respect myself. <laughs> um, I like your hat. Thank you. We should do the YouTube. <laughs> you doing a Jake Hager. You like this hat? I like this hat. This is, my name is Cresta Star, and I like this hat. You have specials every two days. <laughs> I mean, that is that's absolutely fair. <laughs> and next week will be followed by Victory Road, and then the final laugh, and then emergence. <laughs> well, I can tell y'all now that uh, tomorrow night is Impact Victory Road, and we will be here either on here on youtube.com slash Fightful or over on Overbooked. I'm going to say it again for the audio friends in a few minutes, but yeah, we're, we're going to be doing a post show on Friday night for, for Victory Road. And yeah, we'll talk about all that fallout because uh, tonight was was the Impact show that happened. So Impact 999. Angel numbers, like uh, Gia Miller said. Is that what she said? She said that in BTI, that, um, that their match is like 999. And she's like, oh, that's an angel number. And then, oh my God, that man's name forget escapes me. Oh my God, uh, Hotch? No, not Hotch. Who's hot? <laughs> not, not not good hands. <laughs> the, the, the guy she does uh, she does BTI oh, with. Anafin. No, oh, she doesn't. Josh do Matthews. Josh Matthews. That's Josh. what I was talking about. Yes, uh, she told Josh Matthews angel number. What angel numbers those are? I don't know. I'm dressed like a Satanist. So good on you. <laughs> anyway, are you ready to do it? I was born ready. I hear that. I really do. Okay. And a one and a two. Hello, friends. We're back again. It's Fightful.com. It's September 7th, 2023, and it's time for your Impact Wrestling post show. I am Atul Pearl, and of course, as always, my number one collider who now gets to see all of her favorite stars and talk about them on the AEW post shows, but also joins me here for every Impact post show. It's Cresta Star. Hey, Cresta. I'm doing great. You know, I have fallen in love with Impact. I am an Impact shill. And when people start talking crap about Impact, I step in front of unnecessary fire and say, still your mouth. Impact is fantastic. And when they go to say no, all I have to mention is, you know, they say all men are created equal, but you look at me and Samoa Joe, you can see that statement is not true. Impact is fantastic. It really is. And it's also fantastic when you all leave a thumbs up on the video and, of course, support us here at youtube.com slash Fightful by subscribing. That's the free 99 version. And, of course, other ways you can support us is to support us at FightfulSelect.com, the best five bucks in the business. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And you can also donate a super chat, any amount of question or statement read on the air. As always, we love to see it. We will have a Impact Victory Road post show either here on youtube.com slash Fightful or on youtube.com slash Fightful Overbooked. That is our sister channel. Uh, we haven't decided yet because, of course, we have to deal with, you know, the uh, the, the SmackDown show. But I, uh, yeah. You don't need the SmackDown show. Well, the thing is, the SmackDown show might end by the time we take over. Because by looking at the card for Victory Road, it looks like that show is going to end around 11, 11, 15. Not mad at it. That just means we're here till 12 with you guys. I'm tired, Cresta. <laughs> I feel that I'm hopped up on caffeine, so <laughs> I, I, put, I don't feel tired in this moment. I put away my caffeine for the night. I'm 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 on the water for now, and then I'm gonna gonna get some sleep tonight because it's gonna be a busy, busy weekend and a busy yes. 24 hours for us. Uh, and of course, you can donate a Humper Chat over at HumperChats.com. Cresta Star, why don't you tell them what the deal is? You're going to take your fingers and type on your keyboard or your phone, humperchats.com, any comment, any question. Like if you're like, hey, Joe Pearl, I heard you're doing an interview series and you're looking for Jewish wrestlers. How can I sign up? I am Jewish as well. You type that in humperchats.com with your donation amount and we get to keep a little bit more of the donations. Sean Ross Sapp is happy. We're happy. Humperchats.com. And that's a real thing I said about Joel, which I think is absolutely cool. So I wanted to put it over. Something that I am working on. It's very early days. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to reach out to a lot of Jewish wrestlers. I know before you ask, will MJF do it? I'd love him to do it. But obviously, I can't, uh, I can't guarantee that the AEW world <laughs> champion is going to just... <laughs> Clickety clack his way in the most. Who is also the like, guy I want to hear from is Barry Howard. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I, I've I've said it. One of the questions I'm asking every talent is, "Hey, 
have you ever had a match or interacted with Barry Horowitz on a, on a card? And I'm sure that there will be a surprising amount of yeses. So uh, we'll see what goes on. I, I'd love to also talk to Barry himself. But yes, I'm reaching out to to different uh, Jews and Jew-adjacent friends and creators and wrestlers. Uh, that That's going to hopefully be something down the line. This started... God, I know we're going to talk about Impact in a minute, but I'll, I'll just I'll, I'll put this on the table. This started when there was supposed to be a show in Israel in about a, uh, two weeks it was scheduled for. They had Sting, and they had promoted Rikishi and all these people on the card. And then, shocker, Cresta, it wasn't real. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that wasn't fun, but we had started putting together pitch decks. Uh, this is myself and Val Capone, who m many uh, of the friends who are in that independent wrestling scene know Val. So uh, we had started talking about it, and we had started putting together ideas for it. Didn't happen. That's fine, because now I was like, hey, let's just do this like this. I do this all day. So why don't you just come and join us? But yeah, that's something I'm working on. And also, uh, if you want some impact content... We dropped interviews with Alex Shelley, myself, and Jeremy Lambert did one of those on Wednesday. And today, for some reason, Sean Ross that spoke to Steve Macklin. Oh, wow. I mean, it's the biggest rivalry in Fightful's history. <laughs> Told me to piss off. That's crazy. I uh, ripped my glove in excitement just now, so that's coming off. <laughs> Uh, well, not ripping his gloves off in uh, excitement was uh, George Iceman, who decided to be coffee shop Iceman. By the way, I have to say this. Josh Matthews doing the intro and mentioning that Iceman is sometimes in a cave, sometimes he's in an <laughs> office, so you don't know where he's going to be. I was like, is Josh Matthews watching our show? They, listen, Impact looks at us and go, write that down. Write that down. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm free for your creative needs. Uh, if you want a good joke, I'm not the guy. But at least I can tell them. Uh, so that was the Iceman thing. He just plugged Victory Road. That, that's, we, we talk about Iceman every week because it's just mm -hmm. our favorite bit. Uh, Ace Austin takes on Jason Hotch. Solid match. Uh, I don't have much to say other than the fold from Ace Austin gets the win over, Sky, over uh, Jason Hotch. Skyler tried to get involved at the end, but Chris Bay stopped him from getting involved. Do you have anything you want to add about this matchup? I just want to add that when Gia Miller said... Ace Austin is limber because he does a lot of DDP yoga in the back. I don't know why that made me laugh, but it did. You said everything I was going to say. <laughs> I will say this. So there were two things that I really liked about the match. Uh, Hodge working over Ace's ribs throughout the match, doing the abdominal stretch, kicking the ropes into his ribs. I liked that there was some good working of the limb. And then uh, you had the uh, Ace working over um, Jason Hodge's elbow towards the finish of the match. So there was some good stuff. Um, I, I like that. And then Ace Austin hits that tra disaster kick, Trouble in Paradise, turns it into the fold, gets the win. So there you go. Impact Wrestling opens up with Deanna Prazo taking on Danny Luna. Uh, the Brits are in town, so clearly you got to give them the matches, and it's good to see Danny Luna. It's not a long match, but it's a good match, a very competitive match. Deanna wins with the Fujiwara armbar. And uh, at one point, Deanna grabs Danny Luna's arm and just wrenches it down onto the ring apron and has her this falls to the floor and just that 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 was it what do you think of this match this was a, a a pretty fun not too long overstayed match i will say that if there was a match to chant me in this would have been it um also i saw that danny luna in my opinion was playing very close to the ropes anytime diana tried to get in close to do the grapple she was like i'm holding on to this rope back away foul demon it didn't overstay its welcome and i think that set up the pace in this match as far as in this show as far as matches and video packages and the build up to victory road it wasn't very match focused this evening it was very promo based and the matches were bing bang we're playing the hits thank you very much yeah it was a very simple match for diana Perrazzo. she needed to get another win as she approaches uh, victory road and the match with Jordan Grace. Uh, and I don't know. I don't know if Jordan Grace is going to lose her return match. I don't see why you would do that. But also, I don't know why Deanna Perrazzo would... I don't know what they're doing. I don't know where that's going to go. And I think I like that I don't know where that's going to go. But at least I'm happy that they gave Deanna the win, making her look good going into that to match with, with Jordan Grace. And it was a dominant victory. Danny Luna sells well. She did a really good job. You mentioned that she kept doing the uh, the rope work to get away from any mm -hmm. limb-based offense and submissions. That stuff is great. Uh, and then that swinging exploder suplex that uh, Deanna hit on Luna just kind of it was like a, it felt like a swinging net breaker, but she got her all the way up and around. Really, really like that. There's some really good stuff there. I'm looking forward to Perazzo and Grace tomorrow night, though. That's an exciting match. 
I can't wait. I can't wait to see how that turns out. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's it's funny because like it feels fresh, but really we just did this, you know, uh, back in what April? No, was it April? We did I, Rebellion. Was it Rebellion? I, did we I do it like the she, next month at Under Siege? We did it the next month at Under Siege in May. I feel like Jordan Grace has been a free agent for so long, but wrestling time, it be, years become decades and weeks become years. And then she worked the next night at the Toronto, no, at the London tapings. So it's been May. She's been on Impact. So it's been since May. That we've Either way, she hasn't pinned Perrazzo, Grace. So I'm interested to see if they're going to keep that streak going or if Grace is coming back with that heat. It's going to be very cool. I'm looking forward to that. We got a super chat from Monte Collins saying, I uh, love to you both. Well, thank you very much. We send our love as well. I uh, appreciate the super chat. Let's uh, let's keep going. T crazy, Steve. My God. Okay. This is the moment we're actually put over. Um, Cody Diener has a podcast, Cresta. I don't know if you've seen this. It's called Life is Wrestling is Life. And uh, he's been interviewing a lot of impact wrestlers. He's currently doing a three-part series with Crazy Steve mm -hmm. and talking about Steve's background and like, being blind and being a wrestler and just all the all the stuff that he basically said to Steve Hannafin as his character, but like kind of dialed back to normal. Yeah. And I really I, I got to put over that podcast because right now it's it's been a really fun listen. He's had Courtney Rush, Joe Hendry, uh, Josh Alexander has been on. Uh, if you have a chance, go go check it out. So just putting that over the crazy Steve promo, though, I'm going to put this over because I thought it was really well shot. I thought it was really well done. Uh, he basically says there are those who feel that they deserve uh, more because the rules and regulations do not apply to them. I'm not like everybody else is crazy. Steve he says, I'm not crazy. I'm 100% aware of what I do in every one of my actions. Said he saw the embers of a raging inferno in Black Taurus. And Steve knew that he'd be abandoned and forgotten by Black Taurus. So Victory Road, Steve says he will sever the friendship, decapitate Decay, and decimate the unholy alliance that was once crazy Steve and Black Taurus. And the moment he mentioned Decay, Press the star. I had to think, are we possibly going to see the return of Havoc and Rosemary? Or is this just later on? Is this the beginning of a decay breakup or finish? Or are they all going to band together to take out Crazy Steve? I do see this being a catalyst of some sort of decay return, disband, or whatever. Because... I believe that impact is very intentional. You're not going to just randomly or casually drop Rosemary Havoc. And this is like the fourth time I've also heard Abyss tonight, you know? So maybe Abyss is coming back. Impact 1000 is this weekend. So maybe, maybe, maybe. I wouldn't be opposed to that. I would like it if we're talking in the wrestling confines. I kind of see this almost this story as an anime arc. If Crazy Steve is the big bad that gets Jessica, Courtney Rush, and Black Taurus back on the same page, even if it is to reel in Crazy Steve, I would not hate that. This Crazy Steve character, <laughs> I explained it to my friend who had seen Impact for the first time since like TNA, eight-sided ring days, was like, this guy's crazy. I'm like, well, he's always been crazy. Before he was like, let's burn down a house. And now he's like, let's burn down a house. <laughs> That's the best way I could describe it. But if he's the catalyst, I'm okay with it. I like this intensified. I like a crazy Steve before, but this intensified crazy Steve, I really believe he will he will burn down your house. <laughs> you brought up a really interesting idea. And that was the mention that Abyss has Abyss's name was was mentioned at least once, uh, including the Dirty Dango, mm. super serious wrestler, Dirty Dango uh, segment. And there are people in chat asking, like, would they call in Abyss? So Abyss works as a producer for WWE. Sports Illustrated reported today that both Bully, uh, Bully Ray and Devon Dudley are signed to WWE Legends contracts. Well, Bully is going to have a match at Victory Road. And it might PCO might just kill off Bully at this rate. We don't know. Uh, well, no, it's not another one murder. Well, there's going to be an Impact 1000 appearance for that. But anyway, the point being, uh, this could be, I don't know, if, if, if WWE are playing nice with Impact, which they have in the past, you know, AJ Styles did that one sit down for Slammiversary and they've, mm -hmm. they've done some, some niceties over the years. Uh, you could see Abyss show up. I would love to see it personally because Abyss had a very big, uh, you know, big time in, in Impact and TNA. He had a very big impact, no pun intended, in the company uh, and really, you know, made his name there before moving on to WWE as a producer. I think Impact 1000 would be the place to do it. It has a lot of sentimental meaning. I think that 
the last time we saw AJ Styles was for um, was an Ultimate X or something about the X Division or something like that. When yeah, we it was saw him- history. He did a, a Impact gave me my start at Slammiversary promo video. He just mm-hmm. he, he I will never forget. He walks in, sits down on a chair, and everyone was like, "Whoa, this guy!" Yeah. It was a big big pop, and it was just celebrating the company on their twenty years at the time. Yeah, so I, I think Impact 1000 would be a great time to do a call to Abyss. Even if you have to bring Father Mitchell, Mike Mitchell, yeah, there Father Mitchell into it, just because Crazy Steve is wildin'. And not to say that Decay isn't like a violent group, but Decay isn't like, um, they just did the one with Diener. Oh my God, I can't think of their name. Uh, but the, the one that they killed Eric Young out of the design, oh, the yeah, they're not super, but they're like they're like mischief, they're, they're mischief, they're the mischief makers, they're gremlins, they're not really wet murder, they're not those guys, you know. But Crazy Steve is now becoming that guy, which can make them be like, Yo, you're a wildin. A match between Crazy Steve and Black Taurus, yes, yes. If Havoc turns and then turns on Courtney Rush, and then it's Havoc versus Courtney Rush, yes. Absolutely. I'm thinking about all the inter matches and how about how about all the people that Crazy Steve has already messed with? Just now it's Steve, uh not Steve, um Speedball, Tom Hannafin. Maybe someone sticks up for him. Maybe you get Gresham coming back to stick up for him. Either way, these matches are about to slap, and I cannot wait. So I'm just looking at WWE's schedule, and it's it's possible that he makes it because the taping is uh September 9th, Saturday. That's for Impact 1000. WWE is actually in Uniondale that night that's isn't that long island yeah so they're they're on long island and they are going to be uh, you know white plains to long island isn't it like it's not impossible so it's like if you if you're driving i mean uh, let's face it these people about an hour about an hour maybe two hours these people will drive eight hours if they have to for ridiculousness <laughs> we love wrestling <laughs> well tommy dreamer also loves wrestling he said uh, this was a good promo you know what so uh, this was interesting. When I submitted the results, the spoilers for the tapings, they did a lot of editing for the promo between Dreamer and Kenny King. I don't know if we talked about that last week. And if we didn't, I apologize. But there was a lot of something that changed because in my report, Dreamer basically said, I'm putting my career on the line at Impact 1000. Mm-hmm. And then they kind of left it to Kenny King. and the idea. Something changed between taping or maybe Tommy flubbed the line who knows and they changed it to victory road so it's what it's supposed to be um but yeah this is this is the match it's going to be Kenny King Tommy Dreamer's career versus uh, digital media championship so Tommy Dreamer is saying you know since it's about 750 episodes but impact is approaching 1000 so Kenny King is the opposite of what Tommy Dreamer's ever been February 15th he basically marches us through his career February 15th 1980 his dad takes him to his first wrestling show one of the greatest nights of his life he said he had his first WWE tryout in the Westchester County Center in White Plains didn't get the job but he main evented an ECW event in that building seven blocks away I'm assuming that's White Plains Hospital is where he said goodbye to his mom that's not me being creepy by the way that's just me like as a hospital it's the White Plains Hospital's right there anyway that, now I feel weird Chris <laughs> No. Listen, you got it. People are going to misinterpret you no matter what you do. So you might as well be great. If you get offended, I'm sorry, but not really. <laughs> so he walks in. He says, I don't think you should be doing this. You shouldn't put your career on the line. You should think about it. And Tommy says, you're right. I should think about it. It'll either be the end of something or it'll be finally something for me to write another chapter about. And he walks away. So basically, Tommy is like, I'm taking my career into my hands and I will either die by my own sword or I will write a further chapter in my career. I like this. And this is coming from a guy who is sitting often and looking at Tommy Dreamer promos and saying, I I can't keep doing or watching the I'm Tommy Dreamer and I'm a baby face. You have to see me cry type of promo. This was really good. But that's that's been the Tommy Dreamer MO for so long where he gets emotional. He sheds tears. This is the first time where he's like he got emotional as normal. But like this is personal. And he did a good job of saying if I screw up, I screw up on my own. If I succeed, I succeed on my own as well. I liked it. What do you think of this? I can see where you're coming from, but I did not care for this promo. However, I think it was a very good sticking point when he said, you have nothing to prove to Kenny King. Why would you put your career on the line? Now, let's just say in in your wildest dreams, this is Tommy Dreamer's retirement match. 
Tommy Dreamer has done so much for Impact and TNA. I would hate for this with no bill just because it's Impact 1000. I guess he has to win the Digital Media Championship. I I think it it puts things into perspective where maybe we should have or let's do over. There was no contract signed, so technically I don't have to do this match if I don't want to. But I like how it was very, like you said, passionate. But I agree with Heath, and that's what made this promo okay for me. But over, I'm like, I, I heard this from Tommy Dreamer before when he was fighting Bully Ray with the busted open and whatnot. It just made it more compelling when Heath was like, bro, you don't have to do this, especially for Kenny King. Nothing against Kenny King, but no build to retire you. You got to win that digital media, and you know Sheldon Jean going to cheat you out your boots. So I, it makes me question how what's going to turn out here. And if it is a retirement, because I think Kenny King winning is the right call, Shame on you, Impact, for not giving Tommy Dreamer a proper send off. Then, if this is the if this is a story, if it's not, then I don't know. So, two things: Kenny King is forty two years old. Typically, what? Yeah, Kenny Kenny King is forty two years old. He's also a Queens boy. So he there. looks he looks early thirties at best. Yeah, no, he's been in the business for a long time. He looks great. Uh, it, Tommy is he said it himself. He says fifty two, and. It's strange that the 52-year-old would want to put over the 42-year-old potentially on his way out. Presumably, he wouldn't be leaving Impact as an active performer. He would be just not, you know. That being said, if this was reversed and Sheldon Jean was the digital media champion, this would be this would be the Jean match to win. This would be the moment. This would be the, 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 not catapult, but it would be a statement victory for Sheldon Jean. But it's not the case. It's Kenny King. I wouldn't be surprised because Dusty Rhodes is Tommy Dreamer's favorite wrestler that they do some sort of Dusty finish and that Tommy Dreamer somehow <laughs> remains an active competitor. Santino Morella does his goofy who knows what and just keeps going. I don't know. Uh, or they do with something in Impact 1000 with uh, with ECW Originals or something. Or someone from the TNA past that Dreamer has been around. Uh, EV 2.0. I don't hate that. Once you said Dusty Finish, I understood the assignment. Everybody looks great at the end because, hey, what happened at the end? I don't know. What do you know? <laughs> and I'm trying to think of, like, who could show up? Raven? Raven ain't. Abyss? <laughs> Well, Ra Raven's an MLW. He could show up for a night. Hmm. Abyss isn't a bad shout. Sabu, and I'm thinking just like former ECW talent that you could do, who also showed up in TNA. Uh, Sabu, yeah, he can still bump. We saw him. RVD? Rob Van Dam is actually a really good shout. Dra so Dreamer and RVD versus King and Gene at Impact 1000 would not hate that. And then you put Tom Tommy's career on the line again, and maybe that's it. Gene gets the, the pinfall on Dreamer, and we're, you know... Same races, just different horses. I don't know. I, I guess I guess my biggest issue is I think about how Tommy Dreamer is in the company. Whether you like him or love him, he's still someone who helped pioneer so much of Impact's history that I would hope you would give him a build and a proper send-off instead of just say, hey, it's Kenny King. But now knowing that Kenny King is 42 and not, not some spring chicken, I'm thinking to myself, okay, damn, y'all really got history. <laughs> Tommy's, uh, sorry, not Tommy. Kenny has spent a good amount of time, you know, doing the thing. But I don't think a lot of people have recognized him because he's been on and off. He's been in Ring of Honor. He's left Ring of Honor. He's never been a WWE or AEW guy. He's often been Ring of Honor. And then mm -hmm. now he's an impact. And I love the character that he's portraying. I love who he is here. And I love that him and Sheldon Jean are doing the thing. I just don't know what the what the point would be to Kenny King getting the win, unless they're about to catapult into the top. And I don't know if winning, you know, beating Tommy Dreamer is, is something that catapults you to the top. But the point is here, the, the reason why Tommy has a, an affinity for this match and why it's important to him is because of the venue, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's the Westchester County Arena. That's where he, you know, watched his first match and had all these things that he mentioned. But they're also taping Impact 1000 there. So that's why I'm saying some sort of DQ weird finish to set up a tag match for Impact 1000 because... I don't see a reason why they wouldn't have Tommy on the show as an active competitor. They're they're yeah. bringing everybody else around, so why not Tommy too? Yeah, Dusty finish makes sense, and like you said, have like do something for Impact One Thousand. Even if Dreamer wins, I wouldn't hate that because if it does catapult Kenny King, I wouldn't hate that either. 
Or maybe him and Sheldon become a tag team. You got Joya, so why not? Kenny King was in the final four for impact or for um tough enough season two, but let's face it, nobody remembers that. Bro, people tell me that NXT used to be a reality show, like a reality yeah. competition show. Yeah, not great. <laughs> really and I, you would like it, but not great. You know what? Maybe I will watch it because I do like Bully Beatdown. And if it's anything like Bully Beatdown, I'm watching it. Um, do you know who won season two of Tough Enough? I feel like it was Maurice or something like that. No. Mandy <laughs> oh, Rose? And no, God, no. We're going, This is 2002 we're talking. Uh, you won't remember them. Linda Miles and Jackie Gaeta. Who? Yeah. Sorry, not... <laughs> Jackie, <laughs> okay, so let's play Let's play pin the dots. Uh, Jackie Gaeta was married to Charlie Haas. Charlie Haas had a match with Josh Alexander during Josh's uh, Impact World or X Division Championship reign. And he got injured on that show. So uh, there's that. I just, I, wanted to just, I just wanted to make it a thing. Thanks, Joel. I feel smarter already. Wonderful. I'm glad we're here. Everyone's favorite tag team, Joya, take on Sing and Shira. We said it would happen, Cresta. We did it. We made it happen. We said it would happen, and it did. What the hell happened to the audio during the live feed? I just thought the crowd wasn't into it at first. And then I was like, then no, the, the audio just said. Pfft. Something happened because I can tell you live, this was easily the most over and probably the loudest segment and entrance of the entire TV taping. I don't know how they messed that up. I don't know what happened in post. I don't know what wasn't rolling, but I'm just listening back and I'm like, something break. Cause it's over, but it's the most over tendrance of the taping. Something was weird. Uh, did you see the, the one guy in the front row they kept going to who had the red hat and the blue shorts? The hat was on backwards. No, because at this point, while I was writing my notes, I was also putting on my eyelashes. I'm going to be honest with you, Chief. <laughs> God, you and Trinity, I swear to God. Eyelash central here. Um, Trinity just ripping off her eyelashes to get beat down. Much. We'll talk about that. Uh, no, so uh, this red hat guy, I'm going to go off. I'm not going to go off on a tangent, but I will say this. He's at every single big main event wrestling show in Ontario. <laughs> this guy is at every show and nobody knows what he does. He's like he's like Brock Lesnar guy. He's, he's our version of Brock Lesnar guy. I don't, I can't explain it. We don't know what he does. Some people think he works in construction. Nobody knows, but he's always there. He God loves wrestling. Him. That's what he does. He loves wrestling. God bless him for always loving what he does. Not the dude with the Canadian flag. This is a dude wearing an impact shirt and blue shorts and his hats on backwards. He's not in the hard cam shot. If you watch the Joya entrance, he's one of the guys doing this with his friend. You'll see him. He's at every WWE show whenever they're in Canada. He's always sitting hard cam. He's always in the shot. I've pointed him out to people because they'll look at me and be like, red hat here. He's there. So. He's got a gimmick. Good for That's him. dedication. I respect it. Speaking of gimmicks, Joy is one hell of a gimmick, and they absolutely have legs as a team. Uh, Shira wrestling has become a rarity. The last time we saw him wrestle on Impact was June 23rd. His last singles match, take a guess, in Impact. If the last time we saw him wrestle was June 23rd, we have to go back prior to June. So I'm going to go with the other J, January, final answer. January against PCO. I miss Cleo. I miss Cleo. <laughs> Joya hits the one hit wonder on Sing and they get the win. Joy is climbing up the tag ranks. I don't know what to expect other than this team is exciting with the fans. They love them. Uh, what do you think of the match? What do you think of Joya? I know you love them. Come on. Oh, come on. Then. Can I get a Joya? <laughs> what, a, what a dumb but incredibly smart. Because I feel like if you're of a certain age, you grew up on the internet, you know exactly. You know exactly what that is. You know exactly what sound to do. If you were in high school when that came out, ex ex you know what's up. It's catchy. Joe Hendry's over. Yuya was over. And I think that we had said before that he just needed some sort of character, some sort of direction. And now he's got it with someone like Joe Hendry, who's extremely charismatic, who does insulting through song. He's a bar. That's why I play him on my Baldur's Gate run. I'm putting over, but we're not doing that tonight. So you guys have two weeks of respite. That sounds <laughs> awful. Why would you give them why would you give them time off? Wrestling is a 24 hour, 365 ordeal. You must plung them with wrestling all the time. Listen, the people in my faction are weak, okay? 
Tonight, it's Jey Uso who wanted to go out and be a real people and hang out with real life friends. Big E is ready, okay? Joe Hendry is ready. And also, who's the other person? Randy Orton, bald version Randy Orton. He's ready. It's, it's Jey Uso. Jey Uso wanted to take the night off. <laughs> Randy putting the bald and balders game, is what you're saying? Bro, this is bald asshole Randy Orton. Yes, he is. We have to tell him, please don't kill people. Because no matter what you, you could talk to a child, there's always an option to attack. <laughs> <laughs> and he's into it. He's like, let me punt their heads. Bro, he's legend killer Randy Orton. No matter who we talk to, he's like, I'm going to attack like, Randy Orton. Please, please. <laughs> <laughs> let me beat their asses. <laughs> anyway, you know who's not beating any ass? That's Bully Ray. Him and Macklin have a backstage segment. Bully's just nervous. This is the best Bully Ray I think we've seen. Yes. Going all the way back to January. And I've said this before, and I'll say it again. When we sat here and said, why is Bully in the main event? Why is this happening? What the hell is this? Every story so far, Bully's good. Bully is good. And when he when he hits his stride as a wrestling actor, it's so entertaining. And this is it. You know, what? remember what he did with, with Josh and, and his wife at the end of the mm -hmm. paper -view? way back? This was... I can't even remember what it was, but it was it was at the beginning of the year. That very uncomfortable segment from way back then, that was just proof that Bully was going to work in this iteration. And tonight was the same thing. He's nervous. He's scared. He can't put down PCO. But instead, he's like, you know why I want Carl Ouellette? Is because we haven't put down PCO. Cinder blocks, tables, fire, battery acid down his throat. And now Bully has to fight a monster that no one can keep down. And meanwhile, Macklin's like, I just got to beat up Josh Alexander. So I'm good. I'm cool. <laughs> so this all leads to Macklin just being like, I'll follow Bully's lead. Cool. Just don't screw me. Have your, you know, have my back and we're okay. This was a very simple segment. And it really gets over the Bully and PCO story. What do you think? I... I am going to say that this whole PCO saga, I'm really beginning to get it with Bully in this um, in this iteration of him. Like you said in the beginning, I was like, oh, brother, this guy stinks. And now I'm like, you know what it is? Bully Ray has to inject himself right under your skin, not in your vein, just enough so you itch. So when he does funny stuff like this, you can really appreciate it. You calling that man by his real shoot name. <clears throat> because he's turned into a monster, much like you have, but he's more monstery than you. And now you're shook. It's great. It's such good shit, bro. It's such good shit, pal. Sorry. Because to see how much of a scumbag you were, to be afraid of a French-Canadian zombie is peak chef's kiss. And I get it. I get it. I know Bully Ray is a great, fantastic in-ring worker. Sometimes for me personally, his story not don't connect with me, but I'm getting it. I'm getting you all. You were underneath my skin. So now that you're getting exhumed like a dead body, it's funny. It's funny. It's great. It's 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 good shit. It's good shit, pal. I respect it. This this promo was great because Macklin was like, "I got. What do you mean we didn't get? You're fighting this guy. Oh, you can't settle it with fire. Well, I'm fighting Josh Alexander. So <laughs> that's what I love. Is Macklin's just like, I'm cool. <laughs> Well, you I, wanted I, this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You did this. And again, like I think a lot of people rush to two things. One, on the bully side, I think they rush to the clickety clack stuff that he says on Busted Open. And you and I have talked about this. We even talked oh. about it with Steven Jensen on one of our uh, pay per view post shows for Impact. You know, once you realize that this bully is not the same bully that's on Busted Open you start to realize like this is a this is a different character this is a guy who's telling his story in impact and not bringing the he brought busted open onto the show he brought tommy and he brought dave lagreca and he did all that it's fine and it was entertaining Plus dave lagreca <laughs> Plus dave lagreca honest to god the dude did his absolute best with that story that he could took bumps and got his ass kicked and you know even even took a verbal tongue lashing from me, and we're he and I still respect get, the hell out of him. He needs to get his lick back. Dave LaGreca needs to be an impact 1000 hit bully over the head because Dave LaGreca got used for no reason besides doing his job and being there. That man didn't deserve any of that. <laughs> Let Dave LaGreca be the guy who beats down PCO somehow. Special guest rep Dave LaGreca. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh god it's weird when we book the territory hey your super chats can also book the territory so go ahead and send them and also your humper chats get them in josh alexander on the other side of the bracket from the main event he had a promo and it aired coincidentally or maybe not after the will osprey is coming promo i would love cresta to see will osprey versus josh alexander I don't care if it's Bound for Glory. I don't care if it's the the show that they're doing in Newcastle in the UK as part of the tour. I need to see Osprey and Alexander, and I think we're going to get it, and I would just love it. What do you think? Are we going to see Osprey and Alexander? I hope, I wish, I pray, and somehow if you add Speedball Mike Bailey to that mix, I don't care how. I don't. I, if I have to sacrifice Joel Pearl. <laughs> I'll take it. Honest to God, I'll take it. I, I I would like to see it. The promos are going to be very much I'm the impact standard and then bruv, but I still want to watch it. I still want to see it. I, I, I want to see it. I don't even think you need to tell much of a promo story. You just need the two guys to be like, I set the standard where I am. You set the standard where you are. Let's fight mm-hmm. and find out who the better man is. Absolutely. That's been the Josh Alexander story for a long time, but I'd love to see Osprey and Alexander. I think they've teared up very different styles, very interesting matchup. That's what I want to see. Loki want to see Saban and Motor City Machine Guns too, just because I think they're fantastic wrestlers versus Will Ospreay. And I think Will Ospreay is a fantastic wrestler as well. Can they just fight forever? <laughs> I mean, I don't know what they're going to do with Ospreay. I don't know how long he's going to be part of the show because uh, he's doing the UK tour. He's doing Bound for Glory. <laughs> what happens after that? That's up in the air. Who knows? Uh, but Josh Alexander said he and Macklin have unfinished business at Victory Road. The better man's going to win. And tonight, him and PCO are going to bring the violence and the mayhem to them. So cute little thing. We move over to the other UK counterparts. Subculture take on Sammy Callahan and Rich Swan. Sammy and Swan, as I call them. Uh, this is a solid match. This was getting Sammy and Rich Swan back in the win column. Uh, I love the opening with the double drop kick from Mandrews and Swan together. Uh, I do enjoy that they mentioned that Subculture was working in the UK the night before Emergence. They dealt with a travel delay and got to Toronto like hours before the show. And they still put on what ended up being match of the night. I thought that was very, very cool of them to say. Uh, either way, Swan gets to win with the 450 on Mandrews. Uh, and I'm hoping that they're booked for that UK tour because Subculture absolutely deserve to be spotlit again in Impact since joining at Under Siege. What do you think of the match and what do you think of Subculture? This was a stiff match. Every time you, even if you weren't looking at this match, you could hear someone's chest getting slapped, someone's jaw getting slapped, someone's chin getting kicked. It was, it was a good match. Um, <clears throat> the Cactus Driver 97, to which Webster ro- rolls out of, and I think after that, Webster and Mandrews ends up getting Sammy Callahan into a double pile driver or something like that. Not pile driver, um, DDT, it was out. Ab- absurd absurd subculture is really flashy and sammy callahan as much as josh alexander is the standard of impact on another level so is sammy callahan and that's nothing against rich swan because rich swan worked this match but sammy callahan was bumping around like he was bouncy house and he was a basketball it was so good this match was fantastic i want to say around this match is when i woke up Really, because the rest of the, the show to me was very much okay. Middle of the road, I could passively listen to. I don't have too many notes because all I kept hearing was woo, woo, and I'm just like, wow, these guys are killing each other. <laughs> There's some good stuff. I mean, uh, Sammy gouging Flash Morgan Webster before he tries the headbutt. That's because Flash Morgan Webster was hitting headbutts on Rich Swan. There's some good storytelling going on in this. Uh, Sammy has a great DDT flatliner combo. That's always good to watch. Uh, and then the running cutter from Rich Swan from the ramp is good. But yeah, at the end of the day, Sammy and Swan are going to be sticking around. Uh, Subculture will probably make an appearance here and there, but uh-huh. it's expensive to fly UK talent back and forth. And as much money as Impact seems to have, they, I don't think they want to keep doing this for three people when they can do it with one. I mean, yeah, like, and if you do it for three people plus him, it would, that's a lot of money. And no disrespect, I think William Ospreay is, is a lot more money than one of these guys. You know what I mean? Yeah, and also Will is solo. Let's face it. If they really yeah. wanted Ozzy Open, Ozzy Open, they're both in the uh, in the U.S. of A. But they're also under AEW contract. But, you know, who knows? Things can I love Ozzy Open. Like, Mark right. Davis, oh, oh, that's a stiff man. That's me, too. <laughs> Giselle Shaw. Backstage with the entourage. She makes a good point, Cresta. 
So she was screwed at emergence because two other tag teams were added to the match that was supposed to be just them. And then a victory road, the Sean Taraj won a knockouts tag title shot, and they're gonna get it. Is this it? Is this it for MK Ultra, or is it Giselle Shaw and uh, Savannah Evans just losing a match? I think this is Savannah Evans and Giselle Shaw just losing a match. For right now, to me, it makes sense to keep Killer Kelly and Masha Slamovich out of the Knockouts women's title scene. Just that, so it, it makes sense. And the Knockouts women's tag division could use a little bit of a shakeup. I think Giselle Shaw and Savannah Evans together are a fantastic tag team. Also, I did like this promo from Giselle Shaw. She was very intense. I remember when she first came here, we were complaining a little bit about like, oh, she's this, she's that. And now look at her, cutting promos like a true bona fide heel. Like, <laughs> I don't care. I feel like if she, at that point she was going like, this is real glass, cry about it. Like she was cutting a promo like that. Like, <laughs> I, I, I like this Giselle Shaw being vicious. However, I don't think it's a, you're not there yet. Because Masha Slamovich, Let's not pretend like she wasn't beating up Deanna Perrazzo and Jordan Grace. Not winning when it counted, but she was beating everybody up, including the both of you guys. I don't think that's happening. And Killer Kelly, I think, has been elevated so much. Yeah, again, yeah, I think you lose it. I think you lose Not yet. Soon, but not yet. We'll run down the Victory Road card after we get through the, the show tonight. Uh, Rascals, they do a little backstager. They, they're basically saying we're the best. We're going to retain our tag titles. And then... Hotch and Skyler, the good hands, come in and like, hey, we want a tag title shot. And Wentz is like, nah, it's in everyone's interest that the Rascals walk out of Victory Road as tag champions. And I love afterwards they go back to the live crowd. Tom Hannafin's just yelling, collusion, collusion. <laughs> and you've got Matt Raywall being like, calm down, calm down. This is a, an effective segment. Again, the good hands, they deserve to be on the ascent that they're on they keep getting better and they keep getting more realistic as a mm -hmm. team that can dominate no i think that's fantastic as well i i want to see them do more i do like that um after ray walt gathered himself he said it wasn't collusion it was the illusion that rascals are the solution and maybe you should get away from your dissolution i'm like yo how did you stretch before that reach? <laughs> Are you doing DDP yoga in the back as well? A plus. <laughs> I'll, be um, well, I'll see you Leo, tomorrow, actually. <laughs> that's right. Leo Rush and Kevin Knight. This was the match of the night of the tapings, and this was match of the night tonight, in my opinion. I love the story of Kushida's tag partner facing the X-Division champion in a non-title match. Uh, Kevin Knight, again, I yes. can't say enough good things about him. I love that in this case, Leo Rush is this little chicken shit heel. He's the little guy and he goes out, like he does the outside the ropes thing and Knight goes after Rush. And what does Rush do? Goes around the referee and just gouges the eyes of Kevin Knight. There's some really good stuff. The cannonball Lope that Rush does is wild to see live, wilder to watch again. And in the end, Final hour from Rush gets the match won, and then he keeps beating down Kevin Knight. Kushida comes out as uh, Rush has the hoverboard lock <laughs> locked in on Kevin Knight, on Kushida's partner, and Kushida tries to get the hoverboard lock in on Rush, but Rush escapes, gets off the way. What do you think of this match? What do you think of this final? I personally loved every minute of it. Leo Rush is a perfect POS heel, and I love it. I love it. Him not respecting Knight in the beginning and taking his sweet time just for Knight. I felt like Knight was working that match. Knight was being super stiff, but you had to make Leo respect him because I think commentary also was putting over that Leo Rush is fine to take a count out victory. It's a non-championship match. Why should he care? Knight did a fantastic job. Um, <clears throat> sorry, the springboard crossbody that missed on Leo Rush because he got out of the way that looked so pretty, like it got so much height. But Leo being smarter, rolling out of the way, fantastic. I hope we see more of Kevin Knight in Impact. I hope that eventually we see him in the X Division. I don't think it's too early to talk about the, the world championship. But a digital media, maybe. Um, X Division, possibly. This was a great match. Leo Rush is fantastic. Also, that hoverboard lock, Leo Rush locked in on Kevin Knight. I thought he was going to break his arm. It looked so gnarly the way he had it. I, this I don't know what this part of your arm is. Is it the tibia? I don't know what this is called. But that looked like it was about to pop. 
did we talk about the food situation at Rebel Nightclub going into this? This you had mentioned something about how the food options are just kind of like there is none. Well, there was popcorn <laughs> that night. Um, just popcorn, yay! <laughs> so I'll tell you a little story. At Emergence, I'm sitting <clears throat> with my family. <laughs> I've talked about this before. I think I mentioned this on In the Weeds, but I didn't talk about it on, on this mm-hmm. show, the main show. Uh, we're at Emergence, and I'm sitting there with my family. It's my mom, my dad, my brother, and my soon-to-be sister-in-law. And we're all sitting there. We're just watching the show. And I finally, I, I spent like the first half of the show standing up, taking photos, saying hi to people, uh, just, you know, just enjoying whatever. I go and I sit down. And all of a sudden... Kevin Knight comes up to me. It was just, we're just all, because there's a little like area mm. where people could come up. Like it's a very chill area. Uh, so he comes up, he's like, is there any food here? And I just <laughs> laugh. And I didn't, I wasn't laughing at Kevin. I was just laughing because my brother and I had, had this whole long conversation. We had had this whole long conversation on the air about the, the Rebel Nightclub lack of food. And I just said to him, no. Nah. <laughs> It's just like, damn, like, where's the closest food place? I'm just like, 15 minute walk that way. <laughs> it is. The Cherry Street Barbecue is like the closest place because this is in the middle of nowhere and there's tons of construction. So uh, he got yeah. Osmos for those who are wondering. He got, he got the shawarma. It's good stuff. Get it together, Canada. <laughs> <laughs> it's that menu. And you know what? The more what I saw from the Rebel tapings, I don't want people to take this the wrong way, but I'm. I understand why they're moving away from Rebel. There were certain things. I think people, I, I don't know if we talked about it last week, but the um, the video screen, if you notice, there's just the one that was going with the Impact logo tonight. Uh-huh. Uh, normally there's three and normally they expand. For some reason, two of those screens weren't working. The There's LED lights around the, the area that surrounds the ring in the main area of the dance floor. Some of those are busted up. There's some stuff that needs to be fixed. I don't know what the lighting issue was in Emergence either. There was a. It was kind of dark, yeah. It was dark, and then some of the replays I saw from Impact last week on the TV show, also dark. So it felt it didn't feel that way live. By the way, I don't know if that was a post production thing, but regardless, um, I, I, I just I understand what they're doing and why they want to move away. Going to Battle Arts again makes a lot of sense because it's Santino's school. He owns that crop of land and they can mm-hmm. shoot there very easily there's rings there that's it's a good easy spot um unfortunately it's also further away from me but regardless i get why they're moving away from rebel and i hope that rebel kind of fixes up and gets better but it is what it is and a, build a kitchen <laughs> that's what it sounds like it's not like if you built a kitchen you'd be all right it's a nightclub it's 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 a nightclub and nightclubs are not about having kitchens nightclubs are about getting you know young kids having a lot of drinks and Bar snacks, popcorn and water, you know, that's all they serve. Those it's not aren't bar snacks, Joel. Bar snacks are like wings and like no, fries. No, no, no. I, mean, I mean dance club snacks. How's that? How's that? Am I are am I so far out of the youth loop that I'm thinking that there's little like snacks at a at a club? Like they don't do that anymore? No, that's not well, at least not at this club. This is a multi-purpose venue, but it's so whatever. It's just it's it, it's it's an old venue that's been around for a long time. It's had a lot of face-ups, and I think it's almost about to get another one, or at least it should. Um, speaking of which, Dirty Dango and Alpha Bravo were actually at the Cabana Pool Bar where they shot so much extra content that weekend. That pool bar, by the way, is actually in really good shape. There are a lot of people there. If you want to see the weirdest thing ever, a bunch of wrestling fans going into a nightclub as a bunch of um, – drunk people leave a cabana pool bar <laughs> that that is the dichotomy the juxtaposition of fandom right there <laughs> either way dango is like the best of the worst wrestling fans and i think this character is still fun uh he says when he thinks of impact i think of abyss elix sifter jerry lynn disco inferno hard cut love that and he says we're doing it for dixie 1000 this is for you he says is she single i love it it's so uh, and dixie carter by the way she better be at Impact 1000, you know she's going to be there. Uh, it's probably going to be one of the mystery compo- mystery opponents in that 10 woman knockout attack. Man. EC3, no, he just won NWA championship. Never mind. No. Maybe he will, but I highly doubt it. Uh, Dango makes fun of the Jake Something Dream promo, basically saying, you know, it, it doesn't matter if you can cut a promo anymore. And then he asks Alpha Bravo, where did your sleeve go? <laughs> and Alpha Bravo's just like, F sleeves. <laughs> 
And then he says, some, Jake something is the epitome of the gratitude era. I'm looking forward to the match. I'm looking forward to Jake something just beating the shit out of Dirty yeah. Pillow and moving on because they did a great job with Jake something and Sonata building up Jake something. And it feels like we should have done this the other way. Dango should have just beaten, uh, sorry, it should have, something should have beaten Dango and then moved on to Sonata. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And because again, I feel like there's no other way it could go. There's no other way it could go. It's nothing personal against Dango. I think Dango is fantastic. This gratitude error thing is taking me out. But I think he should have been the build for Sonata, not the other way around. Let's get into this contract signing. This was good. I liked it. <laughs> okay, yes and no. So if you want to absolutely destroy the credibility of a contract signing to begin, you bring out Santino Morella and you have him preside over it because then he does his gimmick where he's just like, ah, Delisha Edwards and the, the Holy Trinity. And you're just like, why are we doing this? But then thank God the women took over and cut hell of a promo. I really, really enjoyed this. But if you want on serious work for a title match, call Santino. I thought they would explain why Lish and well, the, why the Edwards is, 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 is had all the champagne. They didn't. They just came out. They with did. That. They oh, said she's celebrating like she won already. <laughs> she's delusional. Well, she celebrated last week. I just wanted the continuity. That's all. She's uh, the Lulu. That's Lish. the continuity. <laughs> Lish saying that she doesn't understand Canadian accents. I thought that was funny. Uh, she's like, I've been there for a long time, and I'm more than a champion's wife. She said, I need. I thought I needed to change my husband, but instead I needed to change, and I won the Knockouts Battle Royal, and I'm going to win the title of Victory Road. And she signs contract. And then Trinity says nothing, signs a contract, and Lish is just like, yeah, you got to say something. And Trinity's just like, I, sorry, I can't understand your stupid accent. Oh. God loves that, by the way. Nobody uh, likes Boston. No matter where you're from, it's universal. I'm from New York, so I'm obligated to hate Boston. <laughs> Toronto and Boston have a longstanding hockey rivalry now. Uh, for those who don't know, I think it was 2011, the... Leafs were about to win a game seven. And in the last 11 minutes of the game, this was a playoff game. The Bruins came back, tied the game and won. <laughs> and, eliminated <laughs> the Leafs. and me and my friend who, by the way, shout out to my other friend, Joel, we were, who was also at emergence. Anyway, we were watching the show, uh, watching the, the hockey game. And we were just laughing, both living in Toronto, just cackling while we watch this go down so yes they, they yell boston sucks and that's just what it is uh trinity says when i first arrived i was excited for all the competition i admit that i overlooked Alicia edwards however you earned this opportunity and then lish says trinity walked in and was given everything on day one trinity pushes back she's like no i came to impact because i knew it wouldn't be easy and i thought this would be the stiffest competition here and then edward edwards gets upset because trinity is like waving the impact flag and he's like no that's us we've been here the longest and this uh, is sorry trinity is really quick to remind edward edwards that uh, he turned his back on impact uh, i unfortunately remember that honor no more best <sighs> trinity takes uh, sorry lish tosses champagne in trinity's eyes uh trinity takes off her eyelashes and they fight trinity gets powerbombed through a table by edward edwards this was good stuff I liked it. Kazarian coming out and making the save late. I felt a little forced because they've got the mixed tag match at Impact 1000. But I enjoyed this. What did you think of this contract signing? I know you said you liked it. It was great. Um, I think that it is funny that Lish also said, you're just upset because we're a power couple. Even if your husband wanted to be here, he can't. Not the crowd then chanting, ooh, so... <laughs> We I it. thought that was so funny. I also, I also agree with you with the line when she said, "You turned your back on on uh, Impact Eddie Edwards." So how can you say you're waving the Impact fan uh, flag? Edward Edwards is such a fly by night Impact character. If Impact is paying him, I love this place. If Impact is paying him, dust this place sucks. I, this is the worst place I've ever worked. That I hated here. <laughs> These two are so annoying. I like that Alicia, like. From no, from remembering when Ace Austin was trying to get with Alicia Edwards <laughs> to where she's at now, how far she's come. Good on her. I hope Trinity beats the brakes out of her. Also, Frankie Kazarian, you coming out late AF was comical. That, that what was the point? I would have rather an Uso come out right now. <laughs> at that point, like that, that was a waste of time, Frankie. Like 
she already you should have came out there once he once Eddie started talking back at her. What? Ooh. <laughs> I laughed though. I popped. It was funny. It was funny to me. So this match, you know, it's not going to be a main event match. Yeah. It's probably a middle of the card match, and like you said, Trinity's probably going to beat the brakes out of Lish, and it'll be it'll be competitive, but it won't be long, and that's fine because once in a while, you know, you can have a dominant victory by one side. That said, where the hell does it go on this card? Is it just a middle of the road match? Could it open the show? I don't think it's probably. Hot. I don't even know if it's hot enough to open the show. Trinity getting the opening pop—that's hot enough. But the match itself is just kind of—I don't know how. I don't know what people are are expecting out of this. This is something I would definitely put on first, because I'm trying to think of what's the other. Uh, there's no there's no world championship title match on this card, is there? No, there's the tag title match. So Motor City Machine Guns are taking on the Rascals, and Alex Shelley is still the Impact World Champion. So that'll probably go on last. This will go on first. You could follow that up with the X Division champion uh, Kushida. So you have both your world, your women's champion on one end and your world champion on the other. And then you do the X division. I don't think this match would suck. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to be frank with you. I think this match is going to do exactly what it needs to do and not overstay. It's welcome. And then you keep the hype going with X division and then you fill it all the way. Cause I feel like the no DQ match between bully and PCO will be second to last. I think Macklin and Alexander is the main event. And I think that plays into this long story about uh, Alex Shelley calling himself or being thinking he's a transitional champion and all that stuff that's been going on. I think that's where we're going. And then those two guys, regardless of the outcome, come back to Shelley and be like, we made event of the last show. Where were you? You're the yeah. world champion, but you're going for the tag titles. What do you really care about? So that's where my brain is. Macklin and Alexander. That. And that was supposed to be a main event match, right? That was supposed to be the rebellion main event, but then everything got thrown, thrown aside when uh, Josh Alexander got injured. Um, but speaking of which, nobody's injured here. It's just FIFAselect.com. Best five bucks in the business. My segue was awful. That's great. Must be late. Uh, you want you want some LA Knight contract news? Yeah. yeah. Fivelselect.com. <laughs> you want CM Punk news and a lot of it? God bless you. It's over Fivelselect.com. You want interview notes from our talks with Alex Shelley and that other guy, Steve Macklin? Those notes and the interviews themselves are available over on Fivelselect.com, along with a Sean Ross Sap Q and A. The Graph City Q and A dropped today. All the other content we give you. List goes on with a whole lot of extra notes that were added this week. Sour Graphs with Alex Pulowski and our friend Kate Elizabeth. And you've got coexisting after dark with Rob and Maggie. There's so much stuff. If you're not there yet, get over to FIFOSelect.com. The best five, five, five dollar footlongs in the business. Remember five dollar footlongs? God, I'm old and I miss that. Do you remember when they got sued because they weren't exactly five? They weren't uh, a foot. They were like a few centimeters or whatever it is. And they got sued to make them a foot. Yes, I do remember those. God bless litigation in all of its forms and sizes. <laughs> You know, sometimes it's wrong. Other times, I like to see the big man get got. <laughs> Everyone's just, I wish I had a segue for like, if you need a few extra inches, but I don't have that. Uh, Impact 1000 <laughs> is next week. We will be here talking about that show, and I'm sure it will be a doozy. I'm looking forward to it. Victory Road is tomorrow night. We will be live post-show talking about it. We're going to give our thoughts on the card real shortly. But first, this main event, I don't have much to add. Bully Ray and Steve Macklin take on Josh Alexander and PCO. Again, love Bully Ray spending the entirety of the match looking scared, not wanting to be involved with PCO until the very end when he low blows PCO off the distraction, rolls him up, gets the win. There's some good storytelling in this, but really Macklin and Alexander have some interaction throughout the match, but it's really about Bully and PCO not touching that makes this match special. What do you think of this whole thing? Bully Ray being scared of PCO after calling this man by his real name will never not be funny to me. <laughs> and you so scared of him, why you call him by his real name? That's fire words. And you keep trying to bring out the real guy. It's, it's not going to work. You can set me on fire. But like Maya Angelou, I still outrise. <laughs> I love this. I thought it was great. The chops that Stephen Macklin was getting across his chest. Ooh. Ooh. Also, I will say Josh Alexander to me looked a tiny bit smaller than what I remember him. But these chops were bazookas. I felt so bad for Macklin's chest. I know it looked like raw meat. And it was worse because the crowd was like, again. And you could see Macklin look at Alexander like, you got to give the people what they want. 
Ah, it was great. This was a stiff match. Um, but no matter if you're a zombie, you are still a man. I'm gonna hit you in your dick. <laughs> this match, this match very much felt like a how you feeling match from yes. Madeline and Alexander. This was kind of their they're testing the waters. How are you feeling coming back from injury? Can you go, you know, comfortably? How are you doing? Uh, and then Bully Ray and PCO are doing the character work. So, like, it works. The match works. Mm. And it has a really good kind of ebb and flow from it. Uh, and then Macklin and Alexander are just like, can we still beat the shit out of each other? Well, <laughs> turns out they can. And it's still very impressive and very entertaining. And then PCO, of course, still hates his body. So he does the, like, drop from Not the that. second rope. Traditional PCO hates his body type of match. But he loses. Again, good storytelling. Just solid stuff all around. That's the uh, the Impact Show. Nine ninety nine. Not the price. That was the episode number. 1,000 is next week. You want to talk Victory Road? I would love to talk about Victory Road. The On the is. countdown, we got two matches. We've got Alan Angels in the Open Challenge. Who's going to challenge Alan Angels? Speedball Mike Bailey. I don't think, but I, he's the first person I always think of. So, I don't know. Jonathan Gresham in his full heel uh, debut. I don't hate that, but Alan Angels is a heel too. Crazy Steve being crazy er on Allen Angels. <clears throat> crazy Steve has a match against Black Taurus. He's crazy. <laughs> I don't know who it is. Drop it in the chat. Maybe you have an idea. Yeah, uh, I don't know either. Ace of Bays takes on Moose and Brian Myers. Moose and Brian Myers on the countdown show. That's been a while since we've seen that. Uh, is this Moose and Myers starting to build to the uh, tag titles, or is this Ace of Bays starting to climb back up too? I don't know. I feel like Ace of Base have kind of been on a losing streak. As of, no, they won. They won well, the BPI. Yeah. I that don't know. I want to say it's. I want to say it's ABC. I want to believe it's ABC. I'm not gonna hold you. I don't. Not for nothing. I don't think Moose and Myers will hurt too bad if they lose. These guys are. Right now they're losers. Not saying that they're losers in general, but right now they're in the loser column, like good hands. But they're at the top of the loser column. Nothing against them. I think this is Ace of Base. If it's not good hands is interfere, I don't know, maybe, but I, I don't I don't see a universe where Moose and Myers win. So I can see Moose and Myers winning, and they have to then contend with the good hands. Cause they'll good hands, let's say that Rascals, you know, win their match for the tag titles, they retain mm -hmm. them. I can see the good hands being like, okay, give us what we promise. And then Moose and Myers being like, mm -mm -mm, we won our match against former tag team champions. Cool. And then they set up Moose and Myers versus the good hands in a number one contendership match as early as impact 1000 as late as going into bound for glory winner takes on rascals so it could be moose and myers against the rascals at bound for glory or it's going to be a multi-person match because it's bound for glory <laughs> uh i'm sorry i don't know if you saw saturday's show last week or sunday show bully ray the cat is back and she's she's hungry and i'm the only one in the house again so i apologize if i get ran in on oh no it's okay we're gonna get through this uh cra crazy steve black taurus who's gonna win this match Crazy because <laughs> he's crazy, not like ha ha crazy, but like let's burn down your mom's house. Crazy, <laughs> I feel oh. bad. I like Black Taurus, but crazy teams want to kill this man. If there's one thing Impact's gonna do, it's have the luchadors lose. I can see Black Taurus losing but winning via disqualification. That's the only other side, uh, yeah. Knockouts tag titles. You got MK Ultra taking on Giselle Sean Savannah Evans. You think that MK Ultra continued their reign as Knockouts tag titles champion? Yeah, I think MK Ultra gives it up to an actual tag team. Not saying that the Shaw Taraj isn't an actual tag team, but it's Savannah Evans and Giselle Shaw, and this is MK Ultra. You know what I mean? Like Motor City Machine Guns versus moose and myers they're not against good days. you don't got a thing yet so no no shade no shade i think not yet but soon they'll lose it to a legit tag team and then you guys might take it from that tag team not yet your time is coming though going back to the uh to the the allen angels match i wouldn't be surprised if it's a tna talent it could be shark boy just something some some old tna talent all right <laughs> title versus career digital media championship kenny king versus tommy dreamer i think this is going to end in a no contest in a dq going into impact 1000 what do you think i agree because i stand by what i said earlier i don't see any reason why kenny king should lose this but also have a little bit of respect on tommy dreamer and build up a go home match so this might be a dusty finish that's what we're gonna call it, dusty finish Leo Rush and Kushida one-on-one -on -one for the X Division Championship. 
I think it's Kushida. Honestly. I think it's because she, I don't, I have a feeling that Leo Rush isn't staying that long. And if it's not, after this, Leo Rush is definitely exercising option C. But I, I don't know. I, in my, in my heart, I want to say it's Kushida, but I'm often wrong. So, <laughs> no, I'm going to actually agree with you. And that's because well, if there's one thing Impact's going to do, what is it? One it title look- change. Oh, true. true, true one true, title true, change. True, 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 true. This is the one that would be most shocking. I don't think Leo Rush is in the fold for very long. That doesn't mean he can't continue on a Bound for Glory and be in a big Ultimate X match, but Kushida winning and then having Chris Saban going after him for the X Division Championship that he never lost fairly. That's yeah. right. But it does also feel like Rush and Saban are still kind of in the way. So, like, you got to do that match. I will say... Only I only say it might be Kushida, largely because I think about how they did Nick Aldis. After Aldis love, he disappeared into, I mean, lost. He disappeared into thin air. So it's not uncommon for Impact to be like, well, your three weeks is up. Thanks. <laughs> Off to your job as a producer. Bully Ray and PCO in an Anything Goes match. I think someone gets lit on fire, and I think his name is Bully Ray, and he comes back as... Bubba Ray, but not really as Team 3D the next night at Impact 1000. I low-key agree with that, and I think at Impact 1000, all the women from TNA Impact Pass jump Bully Ray. <laughs> it's what he especially, deserves. Especially Velvet Sky. Deanna Perrazzo takes on Jordan Grace. This is the return of Jordan Grace. Is this the beginning of the domination of Jordan Grace to get to Trinity and Jordan at Bound for Glory? Feels like it to me. I wish I... I don't even know where my little... um Remember that thing I used to put on my head when I would give you the, my wild conspiracy recipe? I do, yes. I don't even know where that is. But this is my wild conspiracy theory. I don't think Jordan Grace comes back and goes after Trinity. I think she goes after the world championship. I think she beats Deanna, finally gets rid of that albatross, and says, Trinity, that's fine. However, I have bigger fish to fry and I, this is what I want. This is what I deserve. And I don't know how true or not that is. And I'm probably reading too much into a into a Jordan Grace tweet. But to me, that's where it seems like it's going in my mind. So I wouldn't hate it even if it's versus Alexander because it's still believable. Whether it's versus Shelly, that's still believable. Whether it's versus freaking Macklin, that is still believable. I think this time Grace comes back, finally beats Deanna and says, this is done for now. I want to go after the World Heavyweight Champion. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but I'm, I, that's what I want. So I'm going to put it out into the universe. To me, I don't know. Jordan versus Trinity is a big match. Trinity beating Jordan is a big match, but it falls Jordan down the card. And then she has to build up against the guys and yada, yada, yada. It becomes, she wants that world title and that's fine. I I'm all for her going after the world heavyweight championship, but I think it starts first with her doing the knockouts thing. And then maybe in the new year, she starts going after the World Heavyweight Championship. That's fair. That's, That's fair. what my thing is. Uh, but I do think Jordan Grace gets the win over Deanna. World Tag Titles, Motor City Machine Guns take on Rascals. I feel like the Rascals are going to win. I don't, see, I don't see a reason to put Motor City Machine Guns uh, with the tag titles because I was already a little miffed at first that the World uh, that the, the, the tag, the tag that the World Championship was not going to be on the card for a second special in a row. But also, you think about WWE. Roman Reigns doesn't always defend the title, so it does kind of make. He still work there. No, I'm kidding. He's still there sometimes. He shows up. This is Trinity's husband is on the main event. But anyway, the point is, you got a world tag team title match. Rascals are gonna probably retain, in my view. Yeah, I agree with that. Nothing against Motor City Machine Guns, but I will say this: when shit goes left or somebody's not doing what they're supposed to, you know you're about to win the title. So stop it. Trinity defeats the Shedwards at uh, Knockouts World Title Match. Oh, yeah. Uh, maybe Mickey James comes down and runs out since I never lost it. Hardcore country. You keep saying that, and eventually it's got to happen, right? Damn it. Damn it. <laughs> I would hate it. Honestly, I liked Mickey James' last rodeo. After seeing, from what I saw, the little bit of WWE to what she did in, in um, Impact, Mickey James is fantastic. So anytime that music hits, I'm a pop like a pimple. <laughs> On the uh, the Victory Road Impact website, like their their page, uh, Josh Alexander and Steve Macklin is the top match on the card. So if this is the rundown, if this is the order, 
we basically just went through it. And Macklin and Alexander is the main. That's the way it looks. I don't know who wins this. I can tell you Shelly said in his, in his interview he doesn't care, but I think he wants Josh Alexander. Uh, either way, I could do a triple threat with these three. I'd love it at Bound for Glory. But uh, who do you have, Macklin and Alexander, one-on-one finally? My heart wants to say Alexander, but this also might as well be a dusty finish. Only because I think you made a good point when you said this is a big match card. And not to say that it has to be for a title, but just because you're coming back just to have it like this, a title would make it much more sweeter. A vacated title, I'm not saying anyone's going to vacate the title, but it'll make it much more sweeter. I don't know. I could even see Macklin going over on Alexander, say I've had time to study you and this, that, and the third. But I think the capstone should be Alexander going off, going over on Macklin. I just don't know if this is the right time to do that. However, I think a dusty finish is in the future for this as well. I want to be careful not to have too many DQ finishes on this card because then it gets really weird and not so much fun. But we'll see. It's it's going to be a fun card because I like the fact that you and I are sitting here hemming and hawing over mm-hmm. what it could be. And there's a lot of really interesting stuff. Again, having just a world title match for the sake of having a world title match eh, can get boring. So this is yeah. good. There's a lot of really, like, question not questionable but like it's leaving us questioning what could happen so we're going to be here tomorrow night either on the main channel or on fightful overbook depending on when the show ends we'll be reviewing the show we'll be telling you where to find us but either way crest to star for now tell them where you can find you ladies and gentlemen after this program right here with myself and joel pearl i will not be on Baldur's gate this evening I might be. I'm a liar. But follow me on Twitter, Exter, Crest of the Star. That's where you can find all of the shows that I've done, this included. I have a link tree in the bio that has a list of all of the post-impact shows and the collision show that may have to update it. Tomorrow, like Joel said, I'll be here with him. I don't think Steven Jensen's with us tomorrow. No, right? No, but he'll be here with us for Bound for Glory. I don't know if you will be. I guess we're going to find out when that happens. When is Bound for Glory? Don't say the 20th of September. Mm, When is Impact Bound for Glory? Let's find out, shall we? It's not September. It's it's, uh, October. October 21st. That is a Saturday night. It's also good. Hell on Earth. Hey, I'm just saying, last time you skipped the pay-per-view, you ended up having a much more fun time. You know what? I will be here. Impact faithful. I will be here for Brown for Glory. <laughs> Saturday, I'll be colliding with Iridian and Rick and sometimes Shaw Ross Sapp. We did it last week, Saturday, Sunday. It was fun. Uh, Mondays and Wednesdays, you can find me over on Twitch or TikTok at Crest of Star. I'm live and we watch wrestling together Fridays most of the time. But if there's a pay-per-view, I am here with Joe Pearl. I think that's everything I have to say. X, Twitter, whatever it is, Crest of the Star, please. I My brain is off. It's almost 12. It's 1130. Joel Pearl, where can they find you? I'm easy to find. I'm at Joel Pearl. Tomorrow I am in the weeds with Jeremy Lambert, as I am every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern until noon Eastern over on Fightful Overbook. So go and subscribe now. While you're here, drop a thumbs up for the kitty cats and drop a thumbs up for the love. And we appreciate you as we do. Subscribe to Fightful Select, best five bucks in the business. Once again, I am at Joel Pearl, J-O-E-L-P-E-A-R-L. We'll see you tomorrow for Impact Victory Road. Till then, ladies and gentlemen, friends beyond the binary. <laughs>